This week, I had the pleasure to speak with my good friend and warrior, Adir Baliko Terry. We speak about a lot of topics this week, guys. We talk about all things mixed martial arts, how to diet properly for a fight, Adir's journey coming through the rankings as a martial artist from karate to MMA. After we shot our episode with Adir, he had to get stomach surgery, all right? Now, unfortunately, Adir doesn't have any insurance, all right? And he's going to be out the game. Adir makes his money through training people and through fighting, and right now, he's not going to be able to do that, guys. So below, I'm going to post a link on how you can support Adir in his journey to recovery right now, all right? If you want to support Adir, check out his website, adirterry.com. You can use the code word Belico MMA 10 for 10% off your next purchase. Thank you to all the fans and all my friends for showing support. We're going to keep doing our best to put out the best possible content out there. Emilio the Honey Butcher, Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. It's your boy, the Badger. And today we're back with a very special guest, hailing all the way from the 305. Today we're joined by all-around badass, martial artist, samurai, fighter, Adir, Belico, Terry! What's happening, uh, what's brother? Up, brother? Everything's good. Welcome to the podcast, my G. Hey, thank you for inviting me, bro. I love it, dog. No, I love the place, bro. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Thank you for coming, G. Old school, bro. Old school, bro. We go way back. Way back. So if I'm going I'm to put these people down on some game. I started training in 2009. That's when I walked into FFA all silly. And you were already like, I wanted, I don't know if you were professional yet, but you were already like fighting amateur, purple belt, a, like on the fight team, I think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? By the time I saw you, probably was purple belt. At that wow. Point. And I was already, yeah, I was already fighting. I became a pro when I was a blue belt. Like nice. old blue bell. And then, uh, yeah, I was already pro at that point. Wow, bro. And you started fighting in MMA before there was any amateur. You just had to go and boom. Yeah, bro. bro like back in, the, I was like literally in the switch between old school and new school. That that's I do remember that um, there was no pro. There was no amateur back in the day. Nah. Like uh, if you get an amateur show, bro, you were lucky. I remember I only did one, and that was a lucky one. And I had to fly all the way to New Jersey. Ooh, for free for amateur. Oh yeah, bro. They pay the three, for three three minutes. Bro, they pay for everything. They pay for the. They pay for the fly. They pay. They pay my teammates. They pay my coaches. They pay uh, the hotel. They oh pay, no way, bro! Like I was like, bro, it's like a treatment as a pro. Oh and That was my snap. first fight yeah, as an MMA. Well, first and only one. Yeah. And that was uh, the mini event fight for me, because I was uh, already had a bunch of amateur fight, but as a kickboxer and striker. Okay. But uh, that was actually the first one for MMA. And I remember they, they flew me to fight the the hometown boy. Oh, shit. And it was like in a cage or in a ring? Yeah, it was in a cage. In a and, cage. Uh, what was it? Uh, 12 by 12? No, 14, 14? It was a 14 by 14. It's pretty small, right? 14 by 14? I think so. It's like feet, right? Think about like uh, the cage of uh, MMA master, but uh, like not half of the size, like a little bit smaller. Yeah, the MMA Master Cage is big, right? That's 24 oh, by 24, I think. Oh, nice. Is that, is that full, is that full That's UFC a full size? Uh, full size, yeah, bro. Oh, so the pros can get ready for their fights in there. Yeah, like, when normally that, when you like have a fight coming up, like about, I want to say, three, four weeks, that's when they start putting you more in the cage, you know, like uh, getting used to it. Yo, in Masters, when you guys train in the cage, you just do, like, two guys in there, like a fight, and, like, simulate a fight, or you have, like, a couple of bodies in there so you can use the fence and stuff? I mean, depending on the game plan. Yeah, but yeah, normally, true. like, most of the time, it's always uh, the coaches on the side, outside of the cage, and it's always you and one guy. That's dope. So you and make you, a fight. So you make him, like, a fight, you probably fight him. I mean, most of the time, I notice that they do, like, a two or three rounds with the same guy, and then they switch you off. That's dope. You know, like, uh, you, well, you know, you see, I don't know if you've seen him, but we have, like, about 40 to 60 different fighters. Yeah, man. And a weight class, you know, you normally get about, well, it depends on the camp. You get about two, three different body types, but you maintain them with the same guys all the time. Yeah, and you can get, like, guys that are kind of like your opponent. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can mimic your opponents. So if you get, like, a southpaw, you maybe get all the southpaws from the gym or, like, a yeah. wrestler, and you get the wrestlers, and you can, like, have a little group yeah, of Yeah, I mean, you know? that's a good thing about uh, every match, you know, they, you have a little bit of everything, you know. It's not like uh, there's one way that, no, you yes. have a lot of different meds. Which I like a lot. 
Yeah, you get a lot of different bodies, bro. Different so no body matter, type and different styles. Yes, and it's whoever who you're fighting, you can get good preparation, you know? Yeah. Yeah, what's good about, man, 40, about 40 guys on the mat every day, huh? Like training and pro training. Yeah, bro, like normally Ooh. the class is like, uh, bro, yeah, sometimes you got to watch out because uh, there's so many people. Uh, yeah. You're not worried about the guy in front of you. You're like a guy behind you, you're like you might trip or freaking turn an ankle or something like that. It's a good thing, but uh, it, it's also kind of like you have to be careful. But yeah. yeah, you know, everyone knows already each other. You know, like, you know the style, you know this guy likes to dance a lot. This guy might have stayed there a little bit. He doesn't move that much. So you kind of have an idea already. Yeah. Yo, I uh, remember Rashad Evans. He was going to fight. Um, he was going to fight for the title. And that's how John Jones, he fell in training, bro. Somebody, mm. he fell over Diego Sanchez. Tripped just in wrestling or something. Fell yeah. over the guy. Something, something stupid. Tore his ACL. Out of the fight. And then know. that was the rise of John Jones. John Jones replaced him and became the champ. Remember, he fought yeah, Shogun. Right. It's crazy. What was it? What was it? Like, he was like, what? Early 20s? Early 20s? John Jones? Yeah, he must have been like 22, 23. Shh, and then he fought crazy. Shogun. Shogun, dog, out of Shogun. all people who just fought recently, you know? And Shogun was that boy. He was a killer. He was, Shogun, dog. You know, at that time, he and was pride. He, he was, was the Pride Grand Prix scary. champion. He killed Vanderlei Silva in the pro with the knees. Yeah. La Muta style. Shogun, dog. <laughs> And then he beat, oh, Leo Machida. Damn, that was Leo a good time. Machida. That was a good time, bro. Different style. Yeah. Uh, Yo, you were, a, you were a martial artist before MMA, yeah. right? You have before, a striking style. What was yeah, your? Yeah, it was more Shotokan. Shotokan. Right. So basically like a Leo Machida. Machida. Dog. Oh, that's right, Yo. You come out, and you used to come out with the gi, right? Oh, you come still out, do. You still come I out still with do. the gi? It's a karate I mean, gi, right? Or is yeah, it, it's you a karate. It no, no, it's a karate gi. I love that yeah, shit, yeah, dog. Yeah. You come out like GSP, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very traditional, like a very samurai style. I love it. And I always wear—I uh, don't know if you ever see me, but I always wear yes. like, a, like a mask, like a samurai mask. I'm gonna use that for our cover photo for yeah. this photo. Yeah, that's a gangster one, dog. How long have you been coming out with that mask for? Bro, since I—I I believe I only did with the first fight. I did it with my karate gi. I came out, but I didn't have the mask that I customized for my second fight. So since 2010. Wow. Or, or younger, I don't believe. Well, 2010, I've been having a mask. I customized to my face. I was like, bro, that's it. This is it's, it's gonna be for every fight. Yeah, hell yeah. I, love I mean, it, if the promotion let me, I use it. You know, yeah, most of the sure. promotion like the the let you. The only one that I haven't give me the chance is freaking combatter, bro. Cause they, they don't have, let you. They yeah, because of the uniform, the way how you coming out. Oh, that's And then right. studio, bro. They don't just, even do walkout. So, you guys just are in the cage. Basically, right? bro, like when you get in before you get in the cage, bro, it's like. I want to say like five feet before it's you get to the cage. So they tell you like uh, before you go live, they, they tell you, all right, this is what you're going to do. You're going to stand up and you're going to look at the camera. They're going to give you the three, two, one. Then that's when you look at the camera and then you just walk. So you only have like about a good three to five seconds yeah. from that to that. So, and plus you already have it, the Vaseline on your face. Yeah, you got, and you come out with your shirt off already. Yeah, you you're, even have, like, your yeah, you're, like you're ready to fight. You just go. It's like, yeah. boom, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I guess that's what like with the Ultimate Fighter would feel like, you know. Basically, like, show I mean, at least in the Ultimate Fight, you got the chance to walk from the little whatever. Walk yeah, you keep the door in. And yeah, you, and actually, they probably would let you wear your mask there if you wanted to. And Ultimate Fighter, do you probably tell Dana, "Yo, I want to put my mask on," then you can kick in the door. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> at least you have a little walk there, you know. Like, well, let's see what they're gonna do in the next one, you know. But that's normally how they do it. Damn, that's dope. Yeah, so you're signed to uh, Combate right now, right? As a combate, right. Whoa, what's it called? Combate, combate Global. Global. It used to be Combate Americas, right? Com Before? Combate America. Back in the day, uh, I want to say about what, five, six years ago, they signed a contract and they changed it because you know, there, there was too much about inter uh, Latino. So they were focusing mainly on Latino, so now they're doing everything. They're bringing a lot of people from Europe, um, and they, that's why they changed it to Global. So they're trying to, like, hit every... Um, type of people. They hit every market. They every hit every market. market. Yeah, so they don't want to. So now it's not more not Latino. I mean, you're always going to see Latinos yeah, yeah. in there, but uh, it's not Latino anymore. Like, you're always going to have somebody from a different country. Yeah, but they want to, like, broaden their thing. So they don't yeah. want it to be so it's just like, oh, just Latin fighters. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because eventually, you know what I mean? We're gonna, and they're going to run out, dog, you know? <laughs> they're gonna, yeah, bro. Like, how many countries in Latin America you have, you know? Yeah, and, and how many growing. good fighters? Good you fighters, know? good fighters is growing. Dog, we just found out you're fucking half Peruvian. Yeah, IG, half Peruvian, dog. bro. We just find out, bro. We Yo. know each other for that long. Yeah. And I, bro, <laughs> he's American Cuban. I was like, 100%. But then when I saw the flag, I was like, God damn, he's Peruvian just like me, too. He has damn. half Peruvian. That's awesome. So it's a good thing I put up that flag, yo. Because yeah. people are noticing more yeah. and more, you know. That's a good little thing. That's video. a good thing, little thing, bro. I was like, when I came in, I was like, Wait a second, oh, Peru? For yeah. real? I gotta ask him, I gotta ask him. Hell yeah, man. Yo, Peru's dope. Have you been to Peru? I've been to Peru. Bro, it's been a while, but uh, last time it was, I wanna say about 10. 
10. I was 10. When, oh, me too. 9 or 10. Yeah, me too. I was like young. I was yeah, like I was 15, young, you know? But uh, what part of Peru? Like Lima and stuff? I uh, went to Lima. Um, what's the other place? Uh, oh, crap. I forgot the name of it. But uh, Lima. Lima was most of, the pl- uh, most of the time that I was there. I know I went to a different place. I just don't remember the name of it. It's like a three hours away from Lima. Fuck. Something with the sea, like Chacaras or something like that. Uh, man, I don't remember. We used I, to go to the farms a lot when we were in yeah. Lima. Like, well, basically, uh, when I went, it was a, like a bunch of farms. Cusco? Cusco? Cusco. No, Cusco, no. Is, that's where, like, I think, uh, that's where the, 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 the Machu famous Picchu Machu Picchu is. No, no, no. I've never seen that. You ever seen that? Machu nah, Picchu bro, shit? That, that's all my goals. Me too, though. Um, we gotta go. Goal. If I go back to Peru, I mean, it has to be done. Yes. It has to be done. And the Amazons, too, you know? I want to go to, like, the jungle and shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Definitely. There's a lot of shit in Peru, bro. We don't realize it. It's like, like, we don't realize Yeah, bro. They have a lot of history. Oh, when it comes a to a lot it, of history know? and like a lot of warriors, dog. Like, know, um, it's funny that you bring that up because um, when I was younger, they used to mess with me, especially my dad used to mess with me and my family. Um, they, they we have our Inca blood, yes. and back in the day, I'm a, I was young, I wasn't that culture enough. And it was like, you know, you have India blood on you. I'm like, no, I'm not Indian. What's wrong with oh, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That? And now it's like, no, you know what? I'm freaking proud of uh, you know, I have yeah. blood, I have Inca blood inside of me, you know, I'm Inca a warrior, warrior blood, Inca dog. warrior, you know. But Fuck back in yeah. the day, it's funny because I used to see it like in a different way. But now I'm young, I'm older. I'm like, you know what? I'm fucking proud. Embrace that shit. Hell you yeah. Know, embrace bro. that shit. It's like our native tribes, you know. Yeah. Like they're like warriors, dog. And uh, there's a lot of good, a lot of good fighters are proven, bro. A lot Peruvians of good fighters can scrap, are, bro. Dog. Like they're scrappy, scrap, bro, dog. Like, and they always have cardio. They're like we're like kind of like Mexican fighters. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I was gonna tell you it's like the same big thing, ass head. Every time I see proven, they got big ass head, fucking good ass cardio. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Combate's got some proving, dog. They actually they're getting some really good. Uh, what was that? About two, three months ago, they got a, a Peruvian fighter. The Muay Thai guy? It, they I got the brothers, he, bro. He, I think he was a Muay Thai guy, bro. The guy, the, uh, he was fighting. I don't remember who he fought, bro. But he destroyed the other guy. Make it look like an amateur. They got the two brothers, the Mazetis. I think Mazetti, Gabriel mm. Mazetti, and the other one. They have the two Sounds. brothers, and they fought Muay Thai. They used to fight Lumpini Stadium. They fought in the King's oh. Cup before. My roommate in Thailand, who, yo, check this out. I was living in Thailand. My mm. my best friend there, my roommate, he's from New Jersey, right? I'm from. I was born in New Jersey, and then like I'm in Thailand. I meet this guy. He's like, oh, I'm from America. I was like, oh, me too. But he looks like Spanish, you know. He looks proven. He's dark right, as fuck, right, right? right? Like you know, I'm like, like yo, Latino. Yeah, yeah, Latino. yeah. I was like, yo, you lying? He's like, yeah. He's like, oh, I'm I'm, I'm proven. I was like, oh shit, I'm proven too. Yeah. So we're like, we're both from New Jersey. We're both proven. And then I'm like, oh, what state? What part of the city? We're both bo- same city, and then oh. we're and then we're li- and then we don't know this. Then we're like, we just know we're proven, and we're from the same city. And then we're living together. Like a year later, we became roommates. And then that's in Thailand. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. in Thailand. Then like a year later, we become roommates, and then he's just my boy. We're both proven. We're chilling. And I'm like, oh damn, my birthday's coming up. And he's like, oh yeah, me too. And then our birthdays are like two days apart, yo. What? Yeah, <laughs> damn, small world, bro. <laughs> he was the guy we started the podcast together. And when we did this podcast in Thailand, he was the guy who did all the the mics oh the and whole stuff. thing. Yeah. Oh damn, so we go. And I would do the interviews and shit, you know. Okay, okay. But he interviewed these. Uh, he did videos on these guys. I'll show you the the proven brothers that were fighting Muay Thai over there in Thailand. So they were over there. They were in Thailand and they fought in the Kings Cup. So what is it? They just like went over level. there for a little bit. I think they lived train. over there like training Muay Thai. Oh damn! And then they so. moved to Miami and now they're training MMA. So they, I think they moved to That's Miami cool, to train MMA. You know. So they did something similar as you. I mean, yeah, I wish yeah, I would have yeah. done that. I only went over there for a month. For you home. went, you guys, you went on the first trip. This is so exciting. No, 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 wait. Actually, I went you on went the second one. And the you second went one. with FFA. FFA. FFA went on the first one. I couldn't make it. I went to the second one because they did a bunch of different trips. Yeah. But I went to the second one. So who did you go with? Did you go with Coco and uh, John no, Travis no, that was, and everybody? Uh, no, that's, that was probably in the first one. That's when all these guys, the, the old school guys, yeah, they, they went to. Uh, John, Joe Ray. Yeah, Joe Ray, all these guys. Uh, uh, Danny didn't go, right? Uh, no, Dennis. Else? Dennis, Dennis, Dennis went. Dennis, Dennis fucked up Dennis. his clavicle bone, dog. Fucking Dennis, crazy. Crash, Dennis. crazy ass, yeah. dog. Dennis uh, is a wild man. Joe was, Ray, uh, Kevin, Gio. G- Wait, no, Gio? no, Gio didn't go. Gio went way later, though. No, G- he went later on, I believe so. Because I know that he went to China later on. Dog, Chino, was, uh, G- 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 Gio was living in China for like 10 years, bro. Yeah, like bro, living over there, crazy. fighting every week. You know, I fought in China twice, and he cornered me twice in China. He was just randomly there. He was randomly just like because he he worked for a, he worked for a promoter guy who would get people fights right in China, and he was like an American guy, so he would like he could speak Chinese. 
So he would barter. Right. He would barter. He would like the Chinese people who need international fighters. They don't ever do like China versus China MMA. Right, right. When you go to a Chinese MMA show, they'll do like China versus the world. Right, right. So they'll get a bunch of guys with different like passports. Different, oh, yeah, okay. but all the foreigners live in Thailand. Because you know how when you went to Thailand, right, there's right. like guys from Australia. Oh, of course. Europe, yeah, right? you know, like, which is so random. Like, yes, you don't spread that. <laughs> exactly. Yo, but it's just a bunch of fighters doing like we're all doing the same shit. Yeah, just doing the same thing. Thai, yeah. Know? So at that time, um, to stay in Th to stay in Thailand, if you can get fights in China, you can like you can make some good money in China and bring it back to Thailand. Right. Know? So what they were paying you with uh, so Ch then, Chinese money? Yeah. The old, usually, yeah, they'll pay you in Chinese sometimes, and then you convert it. Sometimes they'll pay you in USD, which is weird. Like in China, oh. they just give you cash, like US US dollars. You okay. Know? And they do pay you in Chinese. I think it's called in in Wong R R E M the R M. Okay. Yeah, the Chinese Wong. I have been paid in that <clears> a few times, you know. But you could just change it out. Okay. But I like being paid in USD because it, convert, it converts course, yeah. more. Yeah, and converts you, yeah, you, you convert, you yeah, always gonna get yeah, more yeah, at yeah. the end you of the day. You can convert more in Thailand, and then um, and then sometimes people don't want to exchange Chinese money. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes uh, it can be a little pain in the ass. Why? Because uh, I guess for political reasons. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, they're just like, what the fuck is this? You know, yeah, like, it's I know. a pain. But that guy would get people to fight, and then that guy, oh, so Gio was working for this guy, teaching in his gym, just living in the gym, teaching in China. That's crazy. And then this guy was getting random fighters, so one day I show up, you know, to go fight, and then Gio's there, like, as his helper, you know, and he's like, yo, what am I going, shit? And I was like, in a hard-ass fight, and Gino cornered me, dog. He got me through the fight, bro. No First way. fight, I took the fight on short notice, you know, because I kind of needed the cash. Was it MMA or Muay Thai? It was MMA. MMA. It was in China, dog. And then, um, yeah, bro, like, Gio, like, he's, after the first round was crazy, I tried to submit the guy. Hmm. I blew my arms out. I was, like, mad tired. Like, we, you know when like, you go for, like, Yeah, right, right, like, you go for a submission. You, you think you, you got think it, bro. Got it. This motherfucker's tough. And, 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 and MMA, bro, I don't know what it is about MMA and locking submissions. It's, like, 25 times harder, dog. It's weird, Yeah, bro. bro. And then you got those fuckers. The fucking uh, gloves, dog. And the gloves, bro. And then some people are just really mentally Dog, that's what I'm saying, bro. Motherfuckers, yes, bro. And in a fight, like it's life or death. Then it's yeah. it's weird. So it's bro. like you could have full 100 percent the submission, and you're squeezing the crap, and you like, motherfucker, just tap, bro. It's and they just like, oh, 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 and just like, god damn. It. And I know, I know, I know exactly what you feel. I know that feeling. Dog. Yeah. Anyways, that fight. I remember like <clears> in the second round, G was like, yo, how do you feel? And I was like, yo, I'm fucking exhausted. I was like, yo, I'm tired. He's like, all right. He's like, yo, just chill this round. You won the first round. He's like, yo, just chill and low kick him. And I just low kicked the guy for one round, for the whole round. I just low kicked him and moved, low kick and move. And then came back hard in the third round and got my cardio back. But he told me to do that. He's like, yo, relax this round and just work on your low kicks and move this round. Oh. And then so fucking shout out to Gio, dog. Hey, <laughs> shout out to Gio, bro. Crazy. <laughs> He's supposedly, uh, I mean, I saw him um, I want to say about six, months six ago, right? eight months ago. Yes, me too. Uh, I saw him. Uh, I was chilling with Danny. Uh, shout out, is that Danny Travis? Oh yeah, yeah. And, and he passed by. I was like, "What? Yeah, what the hell? I haven't seen him for years." The last time I saw him too, uh, he was with Danny getting a haircut, and then I went to go get a haircut, yeah. and he was there. He was there. He was like, oh, "What's up, bro?" I was like, "God damn, this guy is like, oh, chill, like, hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> Where you been in China? I'm like, what?" <laughs> It's like, bro, like, bro, you were in China? He's like, yeah, bro, like, yeah, over there, you're chilling, you know, but I'm back. And I'm like, what? It's yeah, he's like, got a just family crazy, over there. Bro. He's got, like, a grown-ass kid over there and shit, you know? That's crazy, bro. It's wild, man. Yo, how did you get into um the Shotokan Karate? Bro, back in the day, I mean, if you know, I mean, you live all your life here in Miami, right? Uh, I moved here, like, in 13, 14, 13. so, like, almost, right. you know? So I've been here since 22 years already. Literally, uh, living in, in Miami. So I moved when Probably I was about as long as me, right? 12. I think I was 12. Yeah, because I'm 34 now. So I remember, bro, Miami back then to what is Miami now is nothing. And I've always been a fanatic for martial arts. I always done a sport all my life. And I, I don't even know, in Venezuela, is one of the biggest sports is baseball. So yeah. my dad put me through baseball. Uh, he put all my, all my um, brothers. Uh, through baseball and he always thought about you know always do baseball because you could be one of the professional baseball player and we can make money out of it you know that was like the, the mindset of my dad and i was good you know i became a champion and everything and then oh, came, snap. Playing yeah baseball. over there in, uh, in venezuela and then came over here and actually became a champion here too in baseball too How, uh, like young right yeah young but i was mm. like what i was like 12 13 i was 13 14 when i stopped what position you play? Uh, I play three. Uh, either pitcher, uh, uh, center field, or shortstop. 
Oh, nice. oh, shortstop's tough. Yeah. Shortstop, yeah, so you get a lot of action, bro. You get a lot of action. You gotta have a good arm. You gotta throw the first good, shit. Uh, yep. Yeah. So that was like the three spot that I would play a lot. Um, and I just got to a point that I just got burned out. Uh, bro, I was doing it since I was, what, four years old? That's crazy, right? Yeah, bro. Uh, with in Venezuela, it's like, bro, it's like Brazil, bro. Like, you play soccer. soccer. You know, like, uh, you play soccer since you were little. You know, in Venezuela, it's about baseball. So, it's true. Uh, so, so I bet you in Venezuela, like, a lot of Brazilian fighters, they'd be like, <coughs> I want to be a soccer player first. And then right. they start fighting. And they start fighting. And and Venezuela, like, I want to be a baseball player, but now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's when I came. I mean, I always liked the fighting. I just they never kind of like it. I mean, I don't know if you know familiar wise when it comes to family and fighting. For some reason, family never likes uh, you doing that. No, especially never. mom. You know, where's mom. your mom? Yeah, my Hispanic moms will go yeah, crazy. Yeah, you know, they go that, crazy. Bro. They want to find out that I actually I was telling that, hey, I want to join this, I want to join this, I want to do this, I want to do this. Like, nah, 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 nah. Me too. Until it got to a point that, um, well, that's what I was going to tell you. Um, in MMA, back then when I was looking for MMA at school, because um, oh, I'll find out. I was all about the movies. Yeah, I was uh, you know, growing up with Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. So I was like, oh, I'm into that stuff. And I was like, bro, like, I want to start doing that. I always like it, but I never got a chance. And I was uh, over here in Miami. Uh, back then, there was no schools. And I remember, it was like, okay, what can I f find that is similar to all I see all the time in the movies? And I was looking for, actually, for a kickboxing academy back then. It was kickboxing or Muay Thai. Yeah. But uh, back then, there was nothing. Oh, nothing, nothing, bro. bro. And, uh, Kickboxing, maybe, but Muay Thai, forget about, yeah, forget about it. I forget Back about it. Back then, when I was, uh, I was what, 15 when I was looking for that. And then I found a uh, Shotokan school, karate. That's how I started karate. I saw a bunch of different karate. I was like, man, but I'm like, karate, I don't know. I went to one other school and uh, I just fell, fell in love. And that's when I found out there was a Shotokan karate. It came in, saw the, the, the sensei, sensei saw me. He gave me kind of like the look because I, back then I was ghetto like really yeah. really ghetto and and i came in and i was like i look and i'm like uh, it's funny because the day that i came, i went to the school they were doing kumite which is fighting they were doing actually simulation sparring oh, snap. and and I, I when i saw that i was like oh shit boom boom they were hitting each other I was like oh this is nice yeah and i was like right right away i was like Deh. i had to come over here so i decided to find a job which i was doing back then car wash. <coughs> i was doing car wash and basically, whatever I make, I will do, I pay my tuition. My parents didn't know. Uh, find out six months later, after I was already joined, and then when they find out, they got mad at me. And I said, like, man, I don't care what you say. You know, I like it. I've been wanting to do this for a while. And then when they noticed that I was getting really good, uh, my dad just one day came in and told me, you know what? I'm going to start paying for your tuition. You don't worry about work. Just focus on uh, tuition. I'm like, okay, even better. And literally, about, about eight eight seven i want to say seven eight months that's when i did my first tournament and i after a tournament bro i was winning and then my sister just came into me you're natural Let, let's compete every month i'm like okay whatever you know let's do it and yeah. i just start like competing and getting win 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 all, all the time and shotokan right and shotokan style in, well, Shotokan and... Is that like um, Lyoto Machida style? <coughs> Lyoto Machida, one? but i also compete on full, on full contact uh, style uh what we call sport karate that uh, one's like basically, to the th body. think about Kyokushin. You know, Kyoko mm -hmm. Kyokushin is like Muay Thai. The only difference that uh, you don't, you're not allowed no to hit in the, the face. I was gonna say all body shots, right? Yeah. Like the only thing you're allowed to hit in the face is with a kick. That's so funny, right? What yeah. We're at? It's like you can do like a heel to the face, yeah. right? You can do a roundhouse. You can throw a ass kick, uh, a side kick, a front kick. Uh, oh. You know, but every every tournament has always uh, different rules. You okay. know. Uh, but most of the tournament that I did it was Shotokan. It was more like a point fighting where you stand out. You know how Alito Machida fight, mm -hmm. and then he goes and whoever goes attack the first and make the first impact. Yeah, that's yeah. it. They stop. Oh yeah, yeah. So you, so it was by right point type of thing. And you had to be like boom, you know. Yeah, it oh, has and to the be the first that. one to strike. So you had to yeah. have like crazy good reflexes. Yeah. Oh yeah, you, know? you have to have a crazy good reflex. The minute you get hit, it's over. That's so. it. It's over. But you can dodge like ten you strikes. You can dodge. Yeah. So Ooh, you that's have intense, like, bro. so think about like a like a fight that you're watching a kickboxing fire combo style. And you trying to like slip all of them without getting touched. And the moment that they touch you, it's over. It's over. Fuck. 
So the speed, that's why, you know, uh, if you see the Lyoto Machira style, how they fire, he fire, and he just wait, he just wait, and bang, and he just tackle, I don't know. That's very, that's that's like the the, the, the traditional Shotokan style. Yeah. But then you do that too with the full contact karate, it's a little different because full contact karate is uh, more like a combo style. Doesn't mean like you hit once and you stop, no, you gotta, you gotta continue hitting. So it's like a kickboxing fight. Think yeah. about like a Muay fight. <coughs> oh yeah, so the uh, the karate is like no head shots, right? With the strikes, and then uh, like, but you can like boom boom, you can just touch yeah. and touch you and can touch. Just touch bah, 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 bah. And sometimes they will stop you if you do the sweep, because uh, well, the ones that I did, they they allow to you allow to sweep the the your 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 opponent down, and yeah. then you can strike him on the ground one time, and then you have to stop. Oh, dope. So I was like, that's the full contact that I did uh, almost at the end of my career karate. That's before I moved to MMA. Oh, it's a good transition, right? Yeah, but no good. ground, no ground. So you mm-hmm. had to learn the no. wrestling jiu-jitsu. When, uh, <clears throat> the good thing, uh, bro, that I didn't know back then, uh, which was my sensei. My sensei, actually, was a Cuban uh, sensei, uh, Lazaro Morfa. Don't know if he's still around and he's still doing it. Uh, well, last time, about three, four years ago, I heard about him still teaching. But uh, right now, I don't know. But shout out to him. Um, one of the things I like about him, it was that he was like one of the f- last few old school style karate uh japanese style which is basically the there's now and there a lot of karate that is a lot of bs they they just do it for the bell and for the ranking and for the money it's like jiu-jitsu now yeah. too bro everything but, uh, bro back then it was old school like the way how he trained and now he does something like that bro probably they were gonna get sued yeah, yeah like that's how old school old school cubans you know? old school cubans they don't style. play dog and he he was he was trained under a Japanese. I forgot the name of the Japanese guy that actually basically showed him. But I don't like that. When when I got taught by him, and I learned all this old school style karate, and then I started moving around to other karate school because uh, he would tell us, you know, well, this week we're gonna go to this place and we're gonna compete with them. But it was more like a inside tournament. And I, and I could see, like, the difference, like, levels, you know, like, I could be a yellow belt, which is a beginner level, and they will have a yellow belt beginner level, and you will see, like, the different levels of us, you know, like, our gym, not because I was in my gym, but our gym would be higher level compared to the gym, and it's like, bro, <clears throat> I got lucky, I got the chance to join a really good uh, karate school back then, not knowing anything. Yeah, yes. like a legit, where you could have been, like, in a pity patty school. Cause right. Like, Sometimes, you know, we're in, we're in the gym and then somebody comes into us and like, we did karate. You're like, all right. You know, mm. like, you kind of, like, you got to see. Because some karate guys do come into sparring. You're like, oh, shit. They take like, this guy okay. down. You know, yeah. like, oh, you know, you're like, oh, this You know, it's funny fast, that, you know? that you say that, you know, they, they give me that look and they say exactly the same thing because the first day that I went to FFA. Oh, my gosh. Because I, I didn't know. I didn't know nothing. <laughs> Good thing I learned some ju- judo takedown sweeps from my sensei because uh, the way how he had learned the karate. He, the Japanese guy actually taught him uh, a few jujitsu submissions. Whoa, jujitsu. It wasn't jujitsu. Japanese Japanese jujitsu. jiu-jitsu. He taught him uh, some sweet from judo and full karate. But he was mainly full karate. And I remember I learned some of them, but we never got the chance to actually practice it. But I seen him doing it. So when I went to, uh, um, to the first MMA school, which was FFA, I remember they, I don't know if you did that, but uh, back then, they, they, before you do anything, they ask you, hey, what you done? Have you done anything before? Yeah. And all of this, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm a karate guy. Oh, yeah, what belt are you? I, I'm a black belt. Oh, so you have a good understanding stand up? I'm like, I mean, I guess, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Do you have anything in the ground? I'm like, not really. I mean, I know some move, but um, not really. And I remember. Would you know, that, like an arm bar or something? Or like uh, the only thing that I remember back then that I knew, it was uh, the arm bar. And the judo toes watcher, which is uh, Uchimata. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, And that was it. Like, anything else, I uh, scramble like a freaking, f- uh, you know, a uh, fish when you put fish in the, on the floor and just fucking yeah. just move around with no water? <laughs> yeah, that, that was me back then. Hell yeah. And they tried me out. Uh, and the striking, I uh, passed. But when they told me to do wrestling and jiu-jitsu, I was completely lost because yeah. I never tried it before. That's why I fell in love right away because I was like, damn, this is new to me. Oh yeah, so like he was, it was good for you because you knew something you can like kind of fall in love with. Yeah, yeah fall in love. Kind of mastered, you pretty, but pretty but in, cr- in the striking, striking, there was a lot of people that, um, and that's a lot of the people that you know, like Tulio, Danny, Gio, Paolo, all these guys. They have a lot of problem with me when it comes to the striking for sure, bro. because my striking was very Lioto Lioto Matira. Yeah, and nobody really sees that, bro. It's unorthodox. And, and, and it's really unorthodox in MMA. In in FFA. More and then boxing wrestling style. They, they were all about boxing, keep boxing. They have a little bit of muta, but they didn't have the muta they have now. Because they didn't go yet. They didn't go yet. Yeah. So when they saw me, I was one of the few karate guys. 
So they, but what they do, they only they wait for me for you, boom, go for the takedown. Yeah. And then once I'm on the ground, then I say, I'm done deal. <laughs> um, how were the hands? Like, you knew, like, how to throw, like, one, two, three hook uppercuts from karate? Or yeah, like, like uh, the traditional style, the Cynthia's boxing, you know? Like, uh, so the only difference is that uh, the way how you do on karate is not like a combo, you know? Like, uh, you know, in boxing, they teach you how to do one, two, three, and karate is not like that. You go one punch at a time. One, come back. Two, come back. Three. You throw hooks, so you got hooks. So you got hooks, you just got a spinning hook, uh, you got the uppercuts. But the two things that you don't use much, in, I mean, at least in my style, it was the hook and the uppercuts. Yeah, they teach say. you, but it's mainly always uh, straight punches. Yes. Like because Leora. everything is line up, li line fighting. Yeah. Like in and out, dark. In and you know? out. Oh, fuck. Uh, GSP, too, bro. That's GSP? my favorite of all time. I love him. That's, uh, to me, he's my idol. And his my jab was very karate style. Boom. It's my Kyokushin. favorite. He's my favorite. He's yeah. a Kyokushin fighter. He's my favorite fighter ever, yo. Yeah, sure, to me, like, my, all time. Uh, he's my idol right there. Yeah, yeah, I too, embrace yeah. him uh, mentally. Uh, pro, everything that he does, I uh, listen, the way he talks, me the too. way he lives, the uh, way he bro, everything. I follow Same. his, uh, but that's why I follow one of the quotes. I don't know if you've ever seen it, uh, which is For Bushido us, quote. Heavy, the Bushido quote, which is a samurai quote. Uh, under the karate uh, environment, which is a Japanese. Yes, yeah, Okinawa. I heard you talk about that. I heard you talk. Does that have to do with your nickname or? No. no. The the nickname came out, actually, it's funny. Um, this is when I was doing the translation of baseball. Uh, I remember back in the day, I was doing skateboard. I was always being a stream guy. Yeah, I was like doing, the rush, you know? Yeah, the rush. I, love it. I was doing skateboard and I was doing BMX at the same time. And I remember... Um, I was into, back then in Miami, bro, everyone used to go to downtown to skateboard. And that's where you see all these old school amateur uh, amateur uh, skateboard guys and yeah. pros. You see them right there. Now you don't see that anymore. But back then when I was used to skateboard, you see all of that. And I remember I was into it. I was really, really into it. You could do like ollies and like yeah, bro, grinding I do ollie. on, the, on, I would, the, on I would the, all the tricks, kick yeah. flicks and stuff. All that stuff. I was getting into that. And got to a point that I got in a big group and I remember one of my friends, uh, that was like probably about two years later. He started just calling me. I don't know. And one day I remember we went to to this place in Miami. What was it? Brico. It was a Brico. And we were doing these stairs, jumping these stairs. I don't know. What was it eight, eight, eight stairs? That's a that's a big thing, you know. Yeah, Trying high, like yo, a big stair, yeah. you know, like jumping just on only that's a he, like if you don't know and you if you if you're scared, you're not gonna do it that easy. Nah, nah, you know, yeah. you have to have the ball. You gotta commit. You gotta commit. So I remember. Uh, I was one of the few guys that I was like, fuck it, if I fall, I fall, whatever, bro. I messed up myself many times before. And I remember because of that, the mentality I always had, I was just, no, fuck it, just go for it. He, one day, I remember we were skateboarding him and a couple of other people. And I remember one day he just go to me and said, bro, you know what I like about you? You're so fucking bellicoso. And I was like, the fuck? Didn't pay attention. The same day he told me the same word, like after we went to other place and I did something I don't remember, he goes, bro, that was bellicoso. And I'm like, the oh, fuck. <laughs> and then at the third time, like that, the same day he repeated the same word, like at the end of almost a fire, bro, we were skateboarding for like three, four hours. And he goes, bro, that's fucking bellicoso. And I got mad because, I, bro, I didn't know the word. I was like, the fuck are you talking about, bro? Why are you saying that to me? And he goes, no, no, bro, no, no, don't take it that way, bro. Like, what I mean by that is uh, you so bellicoso because bellico means uh, is a person that doesn't give a fuck about anything. You just go to war, you know. You know that on the other side, you're about to get killed. You just go to the war. You, if they're throwing bullets on you, you just walk through it. That's like you, like that. You are like this in a skateboard, you know. You just go in and you don't care what's going to happen after. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And then just after that, just the name stuck out. Every time they see me, they'll say, yo, what's up, bellico? Oh, I'm like, dark. oh, cool. And they just stuck like that. My, all my friends started calling me like that. Then it's took in karate and then into MMA. Oh, that's perfect, yeah. That's yeah. a good name too, dog. Damn, hey. so from skating, bro. So it started from skating. And actually, I got, uh, that's when I, I educated myself after he gave me that talk. I'm like, you know what? Let me look at it. Back then, there was no Google. <laughs> Not like yeah. I, I had oh to go, God. I had to go to the computer. <laughs> And, you even look, damn, and, and I had to look it up. At first, I had to look it up in the, in the dictionary, in a fucking book. Which I don't know if you guys are uh, the, the young generation. <laughs> it's oh a book God, where you have to look at the word, and the word has a definition. <laughs> so just letting you know, that's like uh, how old school we go. <laughs> so that's like the first the first way that I had to find uh, the definition, definition of it. And then uh, I remember when I read it, it was uh, it has to do a lot about war. Like I'm like, okay, cool. So it has to do about war. And then I saw that I heard the same name in a movie. Uh, I was watching military, and it was uh, Russians. 
and they were calling one of the Russian the bad guy the uh, Bellico. And I was like, oh, so does that? Okay, I get it. And it has to do something with the, with the, with the army. And I was like, okay. And then I started like getting into it more. I was like, oh, okay, so I see what this means. I was like, okay. Damn. So you've had that nickname since so when you first started fighting. You had that nickname too, yo. Yeah, bro. I was like, bro, it's been like, what, over 20, 22 years wow. with that nickname. Damn, did you hear, when's the last time you went skating, yo? Bro, last night, it's funny, bro, uh, one of my students, this is uh, when we go to FFA, I was about 26, I saw one of my students, a uh, young black belt uh, for teenagers, and he comes one day with his skateboard, and I see him walking in, and he's so happy, because every time he gets to the gym, he's happy, because he loves the gym, so I saw him, and he saw, uh, one side he's carrying his gear, and the other side he's carrying the skateboard, and I said, what you got over there? Uh, come over here, John Boy. <laughs> and then he goes, What's that, uh, Sensei? And I said, Let me see that. He said, I said, I said okay, Oh, you skate? Oh, okay, cool. What, what, what you know? So he's talking to me like I don't know nothing. So I'm at it like I don't know nothing. I'm like, Oh, yeah, what, 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 what can you do? Oh, I know how to ollie. I'm like, Oh, yeah, show me. So we went outside the gym, in the back, in the back of the gym, uh, by the um, guy's bathroom. We opened yeah. the door. It's like, okay, Go ahead, show me. He goes and he did ollie. I like okay cool. Anything else? Oh yeah, I'm learning right now a uh, 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 flip that I call kick flip. I like oh yeah oh yeah. Show me show me. And he goes ah pa. Okay cool cool cool. All right, let me show you what I know. So I start doing a bunch of tricks there that I used to do old school style. And he goes, what the fuck, sensei? You know how to skate? I like yeah, yeah bro. I was skating when you were probably dancing around your dad's balls. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you're swimming around. I was doing this in downtown Miami you said all you were, the time. You were getting chased by cops and yeah. security guards. You were still <laughs> I was like, being concepted, you know? <laughs> yeah, back then, bro, not anymore. You don't see that, you know? No, do people, the yeah. skating culture has gone down a little bit? It was it, big. When, I mean, well, like, actually, they opened in a park. Now that you talk about it, uh, downtown, there's a, well, I've never been to but there's a park under the bridge in downtown Miami, which is for skateboard. You can like with like drop ins and like stuff. Like you like can this. drop like a oh, has like a thing. Like people man. go I don't know like uh where exactly, but I know it's in downtown. That's I mean dope. those are the same style. I don't know if it's back in the day because back wow. in the day you used to do this in Lot uh, you there you go. Exactly. And, and I know because I see a few people from social media that they pull videos and photos. I'm like, oh shit, damn, I would have wished if I had that back in the day in my yeah. time. That would be huge. Um, how did you use, you use, you use to get like wax? You used to use like crayons or like, yeah, bro. That was, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like uh, back in the day, uh, we oh, used man. to, but, shit. yeah, bro, it's huge. It's uh, like the hole under the bridge. The one thing um, I gotta tell you now that I'm older is like, Skateboard people used to fucked up the city, bro. That's one thing now. I, you know, <laughs> bro, it's like back then I didn't think about it because I was young. But now that I, I'm older, I'm like, damn, that was fucked up with me. Like, uh, yeah, because we put up the, the, yeah, all the, the wax and all those and the, all the and, the, and the rails on the, on the little cement thing. You know, a lot of, uh, most of the places they always be in a bank because bank has the best places. Or like the business uh, that they're like a bunch of, uh, floors they always have the best stairs or the best rail so That's you right. will have that bro they will kick you they will call you the cops and you always say you can see it uh well nowadays i don't know because i haven't passed those around those places but that's how it was back then i remember that i used to drive my friends were rigging to skating i never i can never got good at it you know but i would just chill with my boys and we'd go around yeah. and then like uh my friend used to have a saying he's like yo I used to always get scared. I'm like, yo, cops, cops. She's like, nah, it's yellow lights. Don't worry. Yellow lights means you're a pussy. We only run if you see blue or red. So ever since I was a kid, I always knew, okay, blue or red gets scared. Whenever I see security, I'm like, ah, oh, guys. I always think of my boy's brain. Yo, yellow lights means you're a pussy. Yeah. Don't worry, you know? Oh, when <laughs> they scream, like, yeah. when you say, uh, they had, uh, I remember back in the security day. Security come and try to kick you out. You the, know? Um, the two noise, uh, um, they will know, like in a group, they will say, EU. They know that hey, there's a cut coming. Or they say, hey, po, 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 po. They yeah. already scream. So we already know, like, uh, before even the cup comes, we will always have, like, people, like, in, like, uh, two blocks away, kind of, like, watching, making sure that nobody gets in trouble. Yeah. That's the security. We didn't care about security. We just, like, flip him and it's like, eh, feel, exactly. and all that. Yeah, for but sure. once the cops, it's like, okay, now we gotta, we gotta go. run. We gotta go. That's right. We used to go to uh, Miami Day. They used to go to Miami Day College and skate and sneak Miami in there. Day, and bro, shit. Yeah. Miami Day, yeah. That's a lot of stairs and That's stuff. That's like one. Do, you know? I I went there a few times, uh, but for me it was too far away. For oh, me it was yeah. easier to go to downtown. 
Yeah, where are you grew up in? Uh, like uh, back then, I, I grew up in Brico, which is oh. the Brico that I live to the Brico that is now. Oh, nah. but like before. So that will like, be before, bro. Like, this so is like, like a little Havana downtown area. Yeah, like, basically like, like, the, like the, the cups maybe, you know? Yeah, basically. Think about like a little, well, well, little one had changed too, but uh, what little one, what used to be back in the day, that's what Brico was. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, right, yeah. uh, but Brico now is, forget about it. Like, like it's top. buildings everywhere. <laughs> Man, they've really been, they did a lot of construction. Like, I remember like 2009, 2010, it's just all, it was, like, was always construction there. It know? was always construction, bro. Yeah, bro. I mean, the money, bro. A lot of Europeans have come. Yo, Brickell's a fucking hot spot right now. Yeah, it is yeah. a hot when spot. When you go there, it's like another world. I'm yeah, like, yeah, bro. And then people live it. there and they don't even cross that bridge and they don't even come yeah, into bro, the regular Yeah, bro, they don't go outside. Bro, <laughs> you got everything there. They got everything yeah, there. Everything there. You can do groceries there. Yeah. You can go well, the gas station there. You, bro, everything. I will, I you want to buy stuff? You can buy it right there. Yo, no, I was thinking you were saying you're doing personal training and stuff. That's like, yo, you get in one of those buildings and you can start doing clients. And I'm glad you. I have a, a few guys. Uh, Me too. I was, that's exactly what I'm thinking. I'm training mm. a guy in a building right now and I'm like, bro, I need to get in this building and just start More training often. people here and this is going to be my job. Yeah, just bro. come downstairs and train. And those gyms are nice, man. They're nice as fuck, bro. Beautiful, bro. You're like, all the oh, gyms are yeah. and brick all the buildings and also the oh, by Bayfront Park, all those new like buildings Bayfront that they have. Yeah. Bro, yeah. people, bro, over there, like, yeah, dog. I was doing. A, I had one client there, and I was like, "Bro, I don't know if they're gonna let me in this building. This guy." Yeah, <laughs> I was like, they're, they're gonna they know like, who they're letting in here?" Zach, what you doing? Here? I said, like, "I need some new gear for this place." I was like, "Yo, I need yeah. to go back and change my shoes." Yo. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I thought I was just gonna pad some guy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I was like, "Yo, this is crazy." But yeah, man, Brickles changed a lot, dog. Skating. I used to do BMX too, like. Uh, BMX too. Uh, yeah, we used to do like the dirts and trails and shit. Right. I got fucked up pretty bad, you know. Like I hit right. a dirt trail yeah. once, and the bike fell on my face. Right, but, oh, mess. This I got stitches here. People think it's from a fight. I was like, hey, I'm from BMXing, you know? BMX. Yeah, 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 I fucked up my legs. My leg and my back is because of BMX and the skateboard, bro. Oh, so you rode bike too, right? You were yeah, doing the BMX. I was like getting dirt or like uh, street BMX. Uh, I was doing both, but I was getting into more of the dirt. Yes. But uh, uh, problem was that uh, I was I didn't have the chance because it was expensive. Uh, bro, the bro. the bicycle that I have it was. It was decent. It wasn't the best, but uh, it wasn't the worst. Bro, that's it was some decent. bread. Though. You need bread for that. You shit. need bread for that. Skateboard. Oh. It was still kind of pricey back then, but you can you, you can handle it. it. It's like you can figure bucks, out. Bucks, right? You yeah. Good trucks and stuff. Yeah, you but, can figure out. But these kids with the bikes on the trails. You see these kids with the nice GTs. You're like, yeah, damn, bro, bro, like thousand dollar bikes. You know, like super light too. And I was yeah, like, like you my can bike carry you can carry with a with yeah. a one hand, bro. Like uh, those are like the legitimate ones, you know. I know, I, used, I know. Yeah, my dad took us to the track, and I used to go on my regular Schwinn bike, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, like trying to get over the hills, like nothing, dog. You know, I fucking remember like they have like a weird like you drop and you go real fast first, like right, and then they have like those trails. You know, oh like those yeah. Ones? Yeah, dog. But like you said, bro, the bread, bro. To get those the nice bread, bikes, bro, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Your parents need to like know about that shit. Yeah, and back in the day, bro, we're talking about because how old are you now? I'm 36. Oh, bro, so you're so older than me for know? two years. Yeah. Uh, I'm 34 right now. Yeah, bro, back in the day, bro, it's different, similar bro. Era, though, it's same similar, time, you know? similar, yeah. When did you graduate? Like, 06, 04, 05, no, 06, 07? Right around there, bro. I don't school? remember. I had to look it up my papers. I was supposed to graduate 04, and then I graduated 05, so I took a little bit. Because I, I do remember I fell one year. Oh, me too, so that's so why I fell I'm ninth grade. So you might be like 08, 07. Yeah, me because I let, I let to fight, so that's why I fell the year. Cause yeah. I, that whole year I was fighting for everything, bro. And you were doing karate back then, or no? no. You were just wild, yeah. It's funny, bro, because now that we're talking about that, um, I just came into this country, and that was my second year. No, first year. I was in sixth grade. From Venezuela. So, so I'm from Venezuela, so I barely knew English, and I was moving from. This is uh the the fucked up part about it. A lot of people don't know about Miami. <laughs> back then, Venezuelans here in Miami, it was like a like you will see them once on the blue moon. So it's you you will never met somebody from Venezuela in my time when I came in. And you will met somebody it was more like for vacation. So it was nobody like me that actually do in school. I remember in the year that I was I only met one guy and it was about five thousand students in the school that I went, which it was Shenandoah Middle School. And it was one Venezuelan. You're just like me. Where was that middle school? I never heard of that one. Uh, that's on um, 19th Street and that's Southwest, bro. That's 19th Street. Southwest? And, okay. And, and 20, Southwest, 20 Avenue. Okay, okay. Uh, so I, I, I just around there. It's still there. All right, I, nice. Uh, that's what I went for six, seven, and eight. And I remember when I moved, because of where I live in Brico, my area was supposed to either go to Miami High um, or Boogie T. Washington. But the problem with Miami High, it was too far for my Erico. 
So my area called and they ended up sending me to Booker T. Washington. Back then, Booker T. Washington, it was a uh, middle school. But the year that I was going to go, which was a uh, ninth grade, it was going to become a high school. So I was actually the f one of the first Latinos going to a black school. And uh, a lot of people don't know this. Um, the history in that school it was 90% of the population was black. And then the other 10% it was between 5% was white. Cuban probably. And no, like white, white Americans. Yeah. And then the other 5% it was between Latinos and Asians. Mm. So Latino, all, all different Latinos. This is the middle school, right? This, no, this is high school. Oh, okay. you know, uh, that, but that school back then, it was actually a middle school. But I guess because the population was growing so fast in Miami and there was a lot of Latinos because they were not only from Venezuela, there was a lot of uh, Colombians coming in because of political reason. And there's, a, I don't know what happened in Central America, that there was a lot of Central Americans coming in. And bottom line, you go into the high school, uh, the high school, became, I mean, the middle school became a high school. So it, it was a high school. And the first year I went, I was in grade. And one thing that I, that's the reason why I became a, f street fighter because there was a lot of racism between blacks and latinos really yeah black didn't like the latinos oh, shit. and i didn't have no many friends because uh in my area i was one of the few guys that had to go to that school and my other friends that i met in middle school they all went to high, miami high mm -hmm. or they went to coral gables oh yeah you like you lost your crew so i lost bit. my crew so so going to the new school i was like the one of the few latinos and it was like bro every time i was still I was still playing baseball back then, and I was I was doing skateboard, and so I had to become basically. A well, I always fought, but I only fought for because you look for problems with me, and I, I was the type of guy that I will I will not stay quiet. I will answer back, you know. I wouldn't let myself get bullied. Yeah. And that's what basically happened. They were trying to bully me a lot in high school. And then as a you were probably more like a skater, right? Uh, with the skater, remember like you were like a punker or rocker, like yeah. rocker or ghetto. They'd be like, "Yo, are you punker? You're like you're a rocker or ghetto?" That's what they it, it was like, uh, right? back then when so I was. You were ghetto. Like, I you was probably dressed like a slash kid, ghetto like, punk. Okay, okay. So it was a mitt. Yeah, yeah, it was a mitt. But skate skaters always held it down because skaters always fought. Yeah, skaters always they had didn't. To scrap. Uh, yeah, yeah, they didn't like care about it. Like the ego, like, you know, the ego. Part of their, not ego, but Part of their image, you know, like the image over there, bro. Bitches, they didn't know? care, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said, like, "Oh, what's up? Let's go. Right, let's throw down. down. Let's go like that." Like, what the fuck so, that shit? Yeah, jump, jump. bro. <laughs> like, bro, like back in the day to what it is now. I mean, what we call it, man. man you're a punk. You're not yeah. a real skateboard, bro. You're a real skateboard <laughs> back then. You know, you wanna be a skateboard. Yeah, so you started to fight a lot in high school. What was it like moving? Was it hard transitioning to? What was it like transitioning from another country, bro? You were like young bro, too, and, yeah, and the bro. fresh, you know. Like you had a lot of friends in Venezuela where you were at. Yeah, bro. When I where I live, I uh, come from. Well, I was born in Caracas, which is the capital, but uh, there's a city. Oh, shit, but Caracas is crazy now, right? Yeah, no, Caracas is crazy. Fuck, man. Caracas. So you've seen two different Venezuelans. Oh, you've no. seen two countries. I seen the good Venezuelan, and I saw when Venezuela was getting really bad. Because I left, uh, I remember my parents, I'm uh, never going to forget this, I was about 11, and my parents told me, hey, dear, you got two choices. And I was 11 at the time. Uh, what the fuck are you going to know when you're younger? <laughs> they go, we, because I used to come to the United States for vacation. And I remember when we came the first time, and I remember I was 11, and they, they go to me, hey, we're going to sell everything. And I mean, what do you mean you're going to sell everything? Because my dad had business over there. We were all taking care of that. We were like a middle, middle, high class over there in Venezuela. And my dad, remember, told me, and my dad, my mom would sit down and say, hey, we, we got something that we want to talk to you. We might going to be selling everything over there in Venezuela. We're going to be immigrating here to the United States. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah. So you got two choices. Either you could come over here with us, and we're going to figure it out, or two. You stay over there with your uncles and your cousins, and you stay with them over there. I'm like, what the fuck am I going to know? I'm like thinking, I'm seeing the United States, and I'm seeing Venezuela. And I'm like, in my head as a kid, I was like, you know what? Venezuela is good. But if I had to compare it to the United States, man, the United States is all the way up it's here. Level, it's a new level, and I don't know the language. I was scared. I'm like, I was scared about the language because yeah. I didn't know nothing. And I said, like, you know what? Let me stay. I don't know what's going to happen, but let me stay. So you were just on vacation in Miami? Yeah, I, I came as a vacation, <sighs> and then I stood up. Basically, I became immigrant after yeah. a while because my visa got expired. Oh, and, fuck. bro, became a, what we call a ghost. Yeah. I, had to, I had to be a ghost for many years. Uh, you, did you, you sign up to school here, right? 
And when I started school, that was funny because uh, I don't know what was the rule back then that there was a law for students that came in the way that I came I think in. You can get to school, yeah. You can. Only I got the chance to go to school. That's it. Friends that were like, yeah. I had a lot of my cousins. Mi middle school and high school, you allowed to do it legally, uh, but once you uh, got out of high school, you, to uh, out, you right? got to figure out something out because to be able to go to college, they were asking you for a lot of papers. Yeah. And I remember getting out of high school. I was already working high school under the table, and I was going to high school at the same time. Damn, so you kind of knew, but in your head, you knew that you were like in this, like in no man's land, right? So you, bro, you have like a little bit of fear, like you had to stay, so you didn't want to get in trouble. And bro, as a kid, I, you kind of knew like, I mean, yo, as a fuck kid, around and get uh, in I mean, as a trouble. kid, I uh, fuck around because I was a kid, I would never yeah. get bullied. But I always had that fear inside of me, I'm going to lie to you. I always had that fear right. inside of me because it's like, nah, can do this, I cannot do that because if I do this, it's not only going to be me, I can get my entire family yeah, in trouble. Dog. So that's a... That's one thing that a lot of people do not understand uh, when you come for a different country and you have to become a ghost. That's what I say. I was ghost for many years. And when I say ghost, nobody knew I was here. Yeah. Like literally nobody knew I was here. No, no, 100%. I, I, I have proving, right? So my, oh yeah, so my proving family is all in the same boat, you know? Luckily, mm. the Cuban side, we don't have a lot of Cuban family, you know? But you know mm. what's funny? We have my cousin, my mom's first cousin from Peru, uh, married my dad's first cousin from... Uh, <laughs> From uh, my dad, my, my mom's cousin married my dad's my, my dad's cousin, and then like they really got married, dog. But she was she's proving, you know. And then they got she, they got investigated. They thought they were they were trying to do like a green card. Oh yeah, yeah, like that. <laughs> like, oh. They like get a lawyer, and she's like, no, for real, they had to like prove, you know. Yeah, they had to like approve the whole thing. Yeah, look a little sus. You That's know? crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. But yeah, you can get like now you can get like sponsored and shit too. Like yeah, nowadays it's a lot of different because a lot of labs you know? have changed, you know, yeah. especially for the athletes, you know. Um, as I still, a lot of labs uh, back then to where it was now is a lot of things have changed, you know. A lot of even people for school, they got an opportunity, you know. A lot of opportunities that happens now because of so many people come from different countries that it was getting to a point like, okay, we can have these people. I, re I do remember about this. We can have these people that can continue getting educated or we're going to move in back then, um, back to the country, which I know I knew, I, I knew a lot of friends that I met in high school and middle school. They got caught. And they got deported. And they got deported. I know a few people got deported. And, yeah. and that's crazy, you know, because it, it, that's where it go back to the same thing. Uh, me being a ghost and seeing that with my own eyes, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, that, scary, That right? could be me. Yeah. That could be my family. i like, God. So that always I was always on top of my head all yeah. the time. That's wild, yo. And then, so when you guys left Venezuela, your parents kind of saw things were changing over there? Yeah. Like they had to go, right? Yeah, they when my dad was like, because my dad went from Peru to Venezuela when he was early in his 20. And it was, we're talking about like the 70s, I think. That's because Venezuela used bro, to be the shit. That was bro, the richest country. Yeah. The, it was the like rich, going to America for, the for South, country South America, right? When, besides uh, uh, Canada and the uh, United States, Venezuela when it comes to Central shit. America and South America, Venezuela was ruling. The That's entire, right. and a lot of people from different countries are actually flying to Venezuela in that time when my dad got there uh, in the early 20s. So he went through the best. Even uh, I remember he told me a story that there was uh, jobs that you will get paid in dollars. Not in, uh, uh, our money calls Bolivar. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was, uh, it was so good back then that there was a job that they will pay you in dollars. And... The dollar compared to what it is now, obviously, is different. But uh, that's how good it was. And but it, nah, it's not the same. I remember my dad before he made that decision. I was already hearing rumors in the apartment where I live, which was in Guatire, which is uh, an hour away from Caracas, the city that I, I was basically born and raised. And I remember my dad was having that conversation with my mom one time. He said things are getting hard here, and we might have to figure something out. And I remember my dad used to travel a lot to Peru and United States, but by himself with my older brother. I still haven't that chance to travel. And I remember when he said, you know what? I got a couple of friends from the United States. We might have to go over there and see how things are. And then, I mean, then fast forward probably about two, three years later, then that was me traveling for vacation. And then that's when the news came in. Yeah. Wow, they made a good choice, huh? They made, oh, uh, bro, they made a big choice because, uh, I mean, Venice, uh, there was a lot of family that were doing the same thing, and they decided to stay. They weren't sure, you know? They weren't sure. And my dad was like, no, you know what? We're going in all the way, 100%. This is not 50-50. We're going in 100%. I'm like, okay. 
It's the best way to go. When, when my dad came from Cuba, it was like when the when Fidel was about to take over and shit, same thing. His mom shipped him out, quit, mm. shipped him over here like as soon as they could. You know, they got a lottery and they took him out in the oh, pan. Sorry, you know, so that was beautiful. Like that right before, did, and, then, like... and then Cuba went down, bomb, and then he, but he had to wait for like ten years for his mom to come back. You know what I'm saying? So he was like living with like foster family and shit for a while. Wow. You know? So same same thing. But yo, Peru's going crazy right now too. No, but I don't Peru know if you've seen crazy like. Too. Uh, my family in Peru is a little bit worried, you know, because yeah. like, I think yeah, my mom has like, some properties that my grandma lived through, and like we don't know what we're gonna do with those properties, you know. Cause, yeah, like, they're saying that things are getting really bad. Uh, what is it? Um, um, I forgot the name of it. You know, like the country itself is getting like Venezuela. I mean, Venezuela is really bad compared to uh, Peru. Is nice. <laughs> Thanks no, to Venezuela. No, hundred percent. Yeah, but Peru is going actually for the same similar okay. time. Bro, that's crazy. That Venezuela went from like the most. It's just fucked. When fucked up government was when, yeah, when government right. gets Come in charge, this. come dog. What they can do, to, what they can destroy anything that's right, good, anything, bro. bro. Oh my god, bro. Yo, that's like firsthand. Yeah, Peru's like kind of like. Oh my gosh, yo. Yeah. What is it like? They have good communists. Like they have good ideas, right? Like yeah. they help everybody, but there's always like a two percent that help that think they had no better than everybody else, and then everybody else suffers or something. Right. Wow, yeah. I mean, dog. I mean, when it comes to I mean, politics is the one thing I learn about. Um, there's one percent that wants to do something good, but then you have the whole group of about 10, 20% that they don't care. They just want to steal and they want to get it for them. That's why there was a bad reputation for Venezuelan people here, Miami specific. There was, I don't know what year it was. This is about five to eight years later, I was already here. And I started hearing this rumor, oh, this, oh, this motherfucker Venezuelan, they're stealing for the country. Now they're here in Miami and they're having all these apartment, nice places and all this business. But all this money is uh, dirty money and all of this. So Venezuela kind of like the Venezuelans here got a little bad reputation through that time. Because this is when Chavo was still alive and a lot of people were actually flowing away from Venezuela. And most of those families, they were stealing from the country. And they were coming to Miami in specific. Yeah, they were. Ha okay, I know what you're saying. Yeah, there was a thing where, like, yo, if the Venezuelans that were here, like, they were the ones that were, like, the, that were, yeah, because, like, all the poor ones were saying suffering, you know? But yeah, all the they were still suffering. All they the couldn't money, get out. I got you. So, all the ones, I got you saying. So, they're saying, like, oh, yeah, all the ones that are here, so it's all the ones yeah. with the bread that fucking did all the damage to the country. And now so, they're when they, they they know that I was Venezuelan, they thought oh, I was so one they, of those. They, uh, so I was like, nah, 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 bro. Don't compare me with those Venezuelans. Cause nah, bro. I'm the old school Venezuelan. I was like one of the rares back in the day. So and I got, came. And you got out way before. And yeah, I before got way before any of this thing happened. Wow. Yeah, man. You know, I never met a Venezuelan person. Or I don't remember or recall like too many. And then I went to Miami Dade Doral once for a mm. semester. And I was like, oh shit, Doral's all Venezuelan. All Venezuelan. Never knew that, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a like a little, like little Doral. Venezuelan yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, it's like Little Havana, but Doral, you know? Yeah, Doral. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. So then what year? So then you go, so you're draining Shotokan. What made you think, all right, I got to do MMA instead of Shotokan Karate, yo? Bro, I remember I talked to my sensei. No, wait, there. before that, this is one of my good friends, which is still a good friend of mine to this day, uh, my childhood friend. Uh, we did a blockbuster. So we're going way back. This is when I used to go to blockbuster to rent our, our DVDs, movies, and all this stuff. For the young generation, you had to go to a place to get a movie. You had to pay cash money, about five bucks. And if you don't bring it on time, you have you to pay a fee. You have to rewind it. You got Oh, you got to rewind it. If you don't rewind it, you get a fee. Yeah, you get a fee if you don't rewind the whole thing. And sometimes your parents take you. And the movies are gone. And the movies you are gotta gone. You got to get there early, dog. So you had to get there early. Or you got to wait. Like, oh, yeah, somebody said it's going to be, this one's going to, and then they'll tell you, on, they'll have a paperwork. You'll be yeah. like, you go for the movie, it'll be gone. And then you'll be like, fuck, you're so mad. You know what I'm saying? Then you have to come back and they're like, oh, but it's going to come back at six. And you're going to yeah. pray that you're there when the guy drops so it off. Yeah, you'll drop it off. That way you Crazy, could be the Crazy, <laughs> dog. Back in the day, nowadays you guys have it easy. You know, like Netflix, all you have to do is just go in, log in, password. Movie, okay, Netflix, boom, that's it. <laughs> that's how it is. Well, back in the day, it was different, bro. But anyways, uh, that's how I find out. One day, I remember one of my friends, we both went to Blockbuster, and he said, hey, bro, you got your car? I'm like, nah, bro, well, don't worry about it. I got my car. So he got the car of the parents. Like, let's go to to watch a movie. So we're walking around, and then we see two guys uh, facing each other in a the, in the cover of one of the cassette, and I was like, what is that? And it was a UFC fight. I was, I think it was. Like those, Gracie Shamrock or some yeah, shit. One was like the first one. And we saw, we, we, we were like, whatever, bro, let's rent this. So we rented. We both went to my house. We sit down, we start watching. And we started looking at it. Like, what is this, bro? 
And then we see like the first um, um, when the Gracie or, or this guy was actually the Hoist Gracie. Oh, Grace. Grace. But and his guys. this is actually the second movie that we rent, but because the first one that we actually saw, I'm never gonna forget, was Chocolate Dale with Tito Teeth, which was uh, UFC about 40, 30, something around there. Yeah. And that's when we like when we got caught up with the first fight, it was like, okay, this is interesting, but this is not this is number thirty. So that means there's there's gotta be a first, second, and third. So we went back to see and, and that's what we find out. I saw the Gracie first UFC and that's why I was like, What is this? So we started looking at oh, this is real? Because back then, I don't know if you know, um nowadays the WWE is not the same what it was back then. My old school time was like when The Rock was there, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, WWF, Terminator, uh, um, HBK, Undertaker, Michaels, Triple H, uh, Mankind. Yeah, that, Mankind. Like, all that, that was my time. So I was like, bro, I was watching this. I was like, this, this is WWE type of oh, thing. Oh, that's right. So in my head, I was like, bro, this this looks too real, but at the same time, it looks fake. And then when I got into it, I was like, bro, no, this is real. And then we started getting into it. I was like, bro, I was already doing karate there. And I was like, what is this? Interesting. And we start like every time we go to Blockbuster, it wasn't for no movies. We we're trying to find every More UFC fights. fights that we can find there. And that's how I got caught. And I, and I remember I was a intermediate level, which I was either green belt or blue belt. And I decided to talk to my sen- My sensei is very old school. And I just kind of came in. I was kind of like shy and I was kind of like a little bit scared. I was like, should I turn on that time? I said, hey, sensei, you know, I've been thinking about, you know, I want to try a uh, different style. And he goes, no. You are a karate guy. You die like a karate guy. Oh, it's only karate, but it was very old school. And I was like, oh, uh, Sensei, you know, I saw this, you know, and uh, very interesting, you know, this guy, they're doing wrestling, they're doing judo, they're doing Muay Thai. And I, I didn't know there were so many styles that uh, I thought karate was like the biggest one. The karate is only one of them. And he said, no, karate and this and this. Very old school. And I was like, okay. And after a while, that was like, I uh, started getting into it, bro. And that's when I started decide. I was a brown belt becoming a black belt in karate. And I took my decision. Never going to forget that. When I was a brown belt, I was like, you know what? I'm going to finish getting my black belt. But uh, by the time I get my black belt, I will start doing MMA. No matter what. Like, I'm going to find a school that does MMA or does something similar that I can do MMA. And because of the UFC. That's the reason why I made he the decision. The, and he's found the DVD in Blockbuster, dog. Yeah, Blockbuster. But thanks to Blockbuster. <laughs> oh, shout out to Blockbuster, dog. R.I.P., baby. I still like them better than Netflix. Oh. <laughs> Netflix sucks now, though, dog. Netflix is now, like... Nowadays, it's like... I mean, it depends. Yeah, yeah. Depends, you know? I mean, I don't like the, all these subscription, bro. Like, uh, if you want to watch a movie, you have to have this subscription. If you want to watch the other movie, you have to have this subscription. If you want to watch this episode, then you have to get this... Bro, it got to a point that, like, you know what? I'm going to bootleg everything. I'm just going to go to the computer. I know how to look up for all of this. And that's what I do. I, I got gonna... all the websites, though. I got to yeah. live in Thailand. Yeah. So I already yeah. know. I got to get everything. So, dog. yeah, I bro. It's like, I got all the websites. I, and then when all my friends are like, oh, yeah, let's go Netflix. I'm like, bro, that's you. You're paying for I ain't yeah. paying for shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to find this. If I, what is it? What's the name of it? Oh. I will find out. Don't exactly, worry about that. Exactly, <laughs> Hell yeah, that's the way to go. That's what I'm saying. Yo, everything is so easy nowadays, bro. Like, Blockbuster, the Instagram. It's fucking me up too, though, you know? Because we've been doing like 10, 20 years of this social media. Yeah, the shit, social media, so, bro. Like, Back then, we didn't have none of this, bro. Oh, social yeah. media, what it was? Seeing you face to face. That was my was social better. media. You know why I made a Facebook account? Mm. I made a Facebook account because you know who was the head of the game? Um, FFA, bro. They were the head of the social media. Yeah, they were social media. Yeah, they were ahead of YouTube. I never did YouTube. Mm -hmm. I never really understood YouTube. But then when I went to FFA, they were releasing all. So when I signed up to FFA, they were all in Thailand. They were Thailand. You might have been there. I don't know, but half of the crew was in Thailand. No, no, that was uh, still. I I still didn't travel that back then. Yeah, I don't know. Like I was, I remember when I went to go sign up to FFA. They're like, "Oh yeah, your coach is so and so, but he's in Thailand right now." So I was like, mm. "Well, that's pretty dope," you know. But I used to watch the YouTube. So that videos. you got so because yeah, of that, you're yeah, like, "Oh yeah, shit, yeah. Thailand!" So they went and come back. I'm gonna be learning some Dog, shit for that. Yeah, when I went in there, they had like pictures of Kimbo and shit. I was like, oh, this is what yeah. I want. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Uh-huh. But I went to go train with like Masvidal and shit because I saw the backyard fight. But then mm. he had already left the American Top Team. Yeah, he was already. Uh, yeah, that, did you ooh, train yeah. with him in FFA? No. Also, you too. So I, I'm old school, but I'm not that old school. I was uh, the time when Pablo still around, G was still around. Yeah. Uh, Tule was around, Che was around. They all they were training with fighters. Pablo just left maybe when I went there, because Pablo was the first one to leave, or he was around there a little bit. I yeah, a lot of a lot of them too. they left. You know, there was a lot of fighters. I mean, if you really look at it, the history of MMA in in Florida, Miami, there was three school only. 
I mean, not where well, there's a bunch of schools, but yeah, the main ones is ATT, ATT Coconut Creek, yeah. FFA, and MMA, MMA Master back then it was uh, the no Minotaur and Noguera no brothers. Uh, but they were run by the master, which is my masters now, because I met them way back. We were we used to compete each uh, against each other. Valverde, right? Valverde and Cesar. Yes. And oh, Cesar and Negro have been together. Cesar and Valverde have been together. For yeah, they they were in so longer. So there was, I remember back then there was like the top three schools. Were, there was a bunch of other schools, but there was the top three. If you were one of those three gyms, you're like you're the top dog. Noguera was more north, right? They were like always downtown, no, Prickle area. They were right? downtown back then when they started. That's why then. we didn't go there. We yeah. lived, FFA was the closest one to Kendall. Miami people yeah, went to FFA. Yeah, and Kendall, that was like the best one at that point. It was FFA, right? Yeah. And then I mean, Massey, I remember, well, I mean, Massey was Minotaur, which was downtown. That's when they separate. I do know the story about them. They they decide to go the a different way and then they switch it up to a name, MM Master. That's when uh, Baberda and Cesar took over and they did their own thing. So was Baboon and Nogueras with them? Yeah, Baboon was already he with them. He went to FFA, right? No. He was, he's one of the few guys that didn't go through FFA. One of the no, few fighters no, no. From but there was actually, uh, this is funny what it comes, you know. Nowadays, a lot of the big dogs' names, uh, I think at some point, they passed by the FFA. Oh, for sure. Everybody. That's crazy. Like, a lot of those big names at some point in their career, they were at FFA. In Miami, for sure. In yeah. Miami, is that very right? few. I'm saying like, he's one of the very few that I don't know that hasn't like started there. You know? Like okay. yeah, that I know. No, now I know uh, because when I was there back then, uh, uh he, I mean, um, Baboon used to come like once on a blue moon. He oh, would come train to train with us, but that was like very rare. Yeah, it's like um, uh, I mean, uh, like, I'll give you an example. Danny Chavez. Danny Chavez started with us over there, and then he moved to an yeah. master. That's right. You know, man. there's a lot of guys that I had teammates and I remember that they used to be in a uh, FFA guys. I was going to say, all your old, yeah, it's almost like you just. A lot of, uh, just we just move. Uh, what made you make the switch? Was it hard for you to. How long were you at your FFA for a long time, huh? 12 years, bro. Wow. So Loyalty, bro. I love the school. That's what I I'm have saying. A lot like, of respect. Means, yo, I left I left because of Coco, but I was mm. only there for like three months. I love Coco. Coco. Left, I left. Look, but, um, I, I saw Coco leaving, and Coco was one of my st uh, coaches. Um, That's right. And. Man. Me and Coco, we still got it. We even see each other. I even compete against him uh, in, in, with students. Yeah, yeah. Um, to, but but uh, fast forward to that, the reason why I end up switching off, and not many people don't know about this. I don't like to talk about it, but uh, the reason it was mainly for me. Uh, I look, I saw there was a lot of um, other progress that I could grow as a fighter. And I kind of chose the, the teaching aspect because... I'm not going to brag about it, but I've always been good about teaching because I love to teach. And it's something that my sensei, this is what we go way back. My sensei in karate, when I just became a, this is a white belt to a yellow belt. Yellow belt is still a beginner. He noticed that I was already helping other guys that were higher ranking than me, and I was doing better things than them because I was so into it. And he noticed that. He said, you know what? You're, you, you're you going to become a senpai. Senpai basically means an assistant instructor. Yeah. And just like since I was younger, I was already t technically teaching other people. And it just came on naturally on me. And then I moved to FFA. And it was like both things. You know you know this as a fighter. You know, when you do something as a fighter, you have to go in all the way. 100%. 100%. You cannot be just doing one thing and thinking doing the other thing. And you think you're going to be doing 100%. No, you can't. Because one thing is going to take out uh, the focus of the other one. Yeah, and, and especially when you compete. And when you compete. The guy who's doing it, just that, is always going to go ahead of the guy who's yeah. doing 25 that is doing that. And over there, I was doing a lot of, I became basically one of the hand instructor slash manager slash promoter slash head instructor. Uh, bro, I was uh, bro, I was doing like at FFA. At FFA. Yeah, so that's good yeah, though, so because career wise, you learned a lot about. Oh, no, yeah. Business. When it comes to that, I'm very educated, you wow. know. So that's why I'm very grateful for everything that I did over there. Uh, and fighting too, because they basically helped me out when it comes to my career, you know, and my career went really good with them, but it got to a point that I noticed that the other things that I was doing, it was taking away from my training. And then I gotcha. noticed all these fighters that were little by little, I was like, bro, I was making all these fighters become a champion and I was putting a lot of time on them and then little by little they would leave, but they're not leave because of me, they would leave for other reasons. And then it got to a point I was like, bro, like what's going on, I mean, I'm just going to continue getting older here, wasting my time and all this fighting, and at the end of the day, they're not here. Yeah. 
Yeah, coaching is very self support, uh, man. And it's like, bro, it got to a point that I was like, bro, I started analyzing the situation. I was like, bro, look at this guy over there. Look at this guy over there. Look at the guy over there. Look at this girl over here. I'm like, bro, and I'm still here. I'm teaching. I'm doing all of this. I mean, I'm happy with all of it. But where's my career? And I remember I came in kind of like a neutral position. My career was neutral. It wasn't even good, not even bad. And that's when I started realizing. And I have this talk, which is shout out to my boy, uh, Edwin Saria, Little Emperor. Yeah, Edwin, Edwin's a whole um, show. Me and him, we've always been always together. We always talk about this. and Long time FFA guy, too. Yeah, long time FFA. He, I believe he has either 11 or 10. One or two years less than me. Wow. And I remember we talked about it one day, and I just came to him and I told him, hey, bro, you know what? I've been feeling this way. And then he goes, hey, bro, you know, it's funny. I've been feeling exactly the same way. And then one day we just two chose to say, you know what, bro? I mean, I love the place, loyalty, I respect for them, no matter what. At the end of the day, but uh, if you want to do something for your career and you want your career to grow, man, we might have to do some changes. And it was hard, bro, because I come from karate, and the one thing that you learn in karate right away from the beginning, Gecko, is respect and loyalty. Those are the two rules that I learned right away in karate. And I, obviously, I, once I moved to MMA, those rules still stick in my head. And I go with everything, you know, with the friendship, you know, I have a lot of respect for you and I have a lot of loyalty for you. Uh, if you're my girlfriend, the same thing. Uh, my job, the same thing. Uh, with my training, the same thing. So that mentality I always had, that's why I say Bushido code. I follow a lot of the Bushido code, which is a samurai style. And then when I came to MMA, uh, FFA, that was something like that. And to move from FFA ma uh, to MMA master, it wasn't easy. It's gotta be hard, right? It was Man, hard. I could imagine, bro. I was, I was always thinking that. How long have you been at masters for now? Mm, 2000, nah, I wanna say about three, three oh, years. Nice. Before the pandemic be or after? You think? Like literally while the pa pandemic, I was in July. So uh, hit up on, on February, Miami. We got a lockdown. So we di I did my decision after my birthday, I remember. So yeah, around July, August. Nice, and it was, it's been good, right? I mean, that's your Oh, like bro, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, it's been the best decision I've ever done in my entire career. And you signed to Combate after or before? When you, when you went over there, you signed to Combate? Or you uh, signed? I'm, I was, I'm, I'm a free agent. I'm, oh, not, nice. I'm not signed out oh, with okay. nobody. I gave uh, one fire at a time. The only... Com um, oh, dope. The only, uh, what do you say, the promotion that I fought uh, and I had a contract, a long contract, was uh, Titan. Uh, Titan FC, um, that's, that was the only time that I, I was in contact with them. But every other con you ever see me, it's always been one fight deal. Yeah, uh, okay. Damn, they offered me um, they offered me a fight in Titan FC a long time ago, but mm. that's when I was living in Thailand, and uh, I forgot what it was. Oh, they wanted me to take a fight, and then um, I was going to be on Fight Pass and stuff. I think I signed to PXC, which is another big promotion over there, you know, so mm. I ended up going with them. But, yeah, so you fought in Titan Combat. You fought, did you ever fight in CFA? CFA. CFA? Uh, I fought on CFA uh, when they switched it up from SFC. What was the first one? Bro, I forgot. I know I fought in the second one, in the second promotion. After my second promo, the second promo, they switched it up to another name. Mm. Because I remember the one that I did was in La Covacha. I don't okay, know if you know okay, La okay. Covacha. That, yeah, that's yeah, the, the little, the little, little, little ghetto club. club. Uh, yeah. they did, they, they Is that Doral? Where's that one at? Doral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think you used to go there when you were like 16 or 17 and let yeah, everybody bro, in that bitch. That was a spot right there for Latinos. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They did a fight there, which is their When reggaeton came out, though, we used to go out there and just do reggaeton all the time, bro. <laughs> Back in the day, bro. That's yeah. crazy. Bro. Damn, you make, it, you make me sound like I'm old, bro. Like, damn. Back in the day, I was like, no. oh, man, it was right there, bro. It was like, I know, right? Sometimes I talk about times when it was like it was like yesterday, and that shit was like ten years ago. Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I saw that guy like couple couple weeks ago, and I was like, nah, so I haven't seen him about, in three bro, years. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you mean, bro. You know what Damn, I'm saying? That's crazy. Oh man, yo, what, I'm trying to think. Uh, I saw you fight when I was visiting. I seen you fight a couple times. Dog. Last time, did you fight on the show with Danny? You fought on the show with Danny Chavez, right? Like a couple years ago, dog, at the UM Stadium. UM Stadium. What fight he was fighting? Fuck. Cause I mean I oh, fought no. with a lot of old school guys. And then with uh, what was your last fight in UM? You fought in UM with Chino fought in UM just recently. Oh yeah, that was a this UM. This year, this yeah. year I just no, no 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 that was a uh, last year. Like, no wait, that was a uh, what's the name of this play? Uh, at, at MMA. A new show. Hey, it's a new show. Um, <gasps> that was about 2023, so that was a year and a half ago. Damn no no, but I was living in Miami already. I think like a year. A year ago. and a half ago or two years. 
it was either a year and a half ago or two years. Uh, that was me and Chino. No, actually, it was me, Chino, and what's this guy? You name? and Danny. Was it you and Danny? No, no, no. It was me, Chino, and and another guy. I forgot his name. Uh, uh, Mansu, Mansu, which is a uh, one one seventy. He fights a one seventy, one eighty five. I just like because yeah. he came out to that song that I like that that bam, 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 that bam, reggaeton yeah yeah, yeah, yeah but that yeah. song was hard and that's the first time I heard that song when he came out I was like oh I like and Shazamed it when you were walking out <laughs> holy shit I like this song dog I like you know I love about MMA masters you guys are like real tight bro like whenever you guys fight you come out like a squad dog. yeah like a squad like a like, like the 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 Gracie style yeah, back in the day yeah I love it dog you yeah. see like the love and like admiration you guys all have you guys come squad yeah, like, yeah when it around, comes to that, that's one thing I love about like that's a, you know one team. of the bigger things uh, that I love about MMA masters is the energy bro yeah. it's the energy of family and uh, you know they they want the best for you as an athlete they want the best for you you know if you listen you follow command they you're gonna do good. You know, yeah. so you far. Guys, they got the nice strength and conditioning station. Man, that place is huge, bro. bro. Is Masters huge. is a crazy facility, but they yeah. really worked hard. At grand- I'm sure it wasn't bro, always like that. Bro, you know? it wasn't like that, bro. If you see that where, it, I mean, I seen their, their progress from back in the day when I used to compete against them to what it is now. When they were in Brico, I remember seeing the gym. They were in the second floor in Brico. It was a nice gym, but it wasn't that big. Then they went to the Rao. Uh, I they, remember that one. Uh, they were in the corner. There. They were in the corner, and I believe that was the second, not the third spot, because they were somewhere in the row, which I never saw the other gym. They, I heard a story about Danny. They told me that they moved. That's the place that you probably saw, which is the right and there from the road. They went to the new place, which is the one that you seen already. Yeah, that one and bro, that, yeah, that place is huge. When I find out, I was like, oh, we moving now. Like where? And then they show us the photos. They're like, oh damn, this thing is big. That mat space is crazy. That's it's crazy. Cool. You have that huge mass space, and then you have a full octagon in the back. Yeah, that's right. And then, you and then after that, then you have another world of conditioning of all, condition, all, all the, the way in the back. Conditioning and everything. I'm trying to think. So you guys have a lot of regular people that go. They have like a lot of regular students that go there too and stuff. Yeah, like when it comes after. I mean, I don't know much about it because I only go to a pro level. Yeah, like yeah, training. yeah, yeah. But I know that after I want to say about four, five p.m., it becomes uh, all classes, like, like regular, regular classes for like, level, all levels. Yeah, you don't do no coaching or anything there. Anything no, like I only that? coach in the morning, and yeah. and uh, what is it, nine thirty, which I do jujitsu. Gi, no, I mean sorry, no gi, jujitsu. Oh, you coach at uh, Masters. I have a Masters. Oh, dope! You have a nine o'clock class. Yeah, I got a nine thirty on uh, Mondays and Wednesday. Oh, dope! And there's a lot of people. It's pretty packed, or what? Yeah, like, but regular people or it's mostly fighters. Regular? No, no, no. It's regular people. I uh, get about fifteen to twenty, and level wise, I get from black belts, brown belts, purple belts, blue belts. Now I'm getting a lot of white belts. Nice. So you get all levels there. Yeah. You have your black belt from Valverde in Jiu-Jitsu? I got, actually, I got or two from, black belts. You have two? Uh, oh, two black belts. I'm trying well, to get yeah. the third black belt, which is by Valverde. Uh, but he's, uh, basically, this is a funny story because he told me, I know, my, uh, he talks like this, my friend, you're black belt already. Don't worry about that. You know, focus on fighting. <laughs> I'm like, master, it's not about that. You know, for me, it's legacy. You know, yeah. I always look for legacy. And legacy to me is huge. You know, having a black belt under you, to me, that's a lot of respect and a lot of legacy to other things, you know. Did you get one from Marcos too? Yeah. I got first black belt, which was karate. My second black belt was on freestyle. Uh, Basically, so I'm a black belt, no gi. Like MMA. MMA MMA style black belt. Uh, And then I went to my master and then they they asked me. I remember the first day they interviewed me. It's like, what what was your belt ranking? and What's your record? And all of this. And then I remember talking to him, and I said, you know, I'm really looking for it because I did give for a long time. But uh, I never got the chance to get my black belt. He said, my friend, you black belt. You know, because he's Brazilian. <laughs> and, he's so a, and I'm like, yeah, Master, I understand where you're coming from. You know, I know where you But uh, to me, it's very important. It. I do want the black belt. And my, the diploma says, you know, you are a black belt under Valverde. You know, that's huge, you know. How many people can say, you know, I got two, three black belts? Yeah, that's good. You know, you that's... Know. You know, and black belt and cr- yeah, dog. And it's, it's like gonna a be very different. And it's gonna be very different too because it's like the MMA black belt is like way, you know, from the gi from I guess more gi black belt, you know. It's different, bro. But if you get a black belt from Avalon, it is recognized, right? Like oh, still, it's recognized. It's recognized. Bro. It's gotta be because like no, me, it is recognized, bro. Shit, because dog, there's you know? one. I ain't gonna lie to you. There's one thing that they done, and I respect to this day. Um, I have a lot of respect for them, no matter what. Is the way how they they make the program so good, bro. It was good. It is good. I bet we all teach the same and we don't even know it. I bet yeah. you, me and you, we all run the class. Like, Very similar. Like we learn from yeah. them, dog, you know? 
there's one thing I noticed, and I'm not talking to you because I come from that, but you came from that gym too. And also Coco, I know that he came from that too. That's his face, um, bro. His style. And then one thing I noticed about is um, it was a time, and I remember this is probably the five years I was already in. I was looking at blue belts, blue belt from FFA, murdering black belts, BJJ from other teams in competition. And then the philosophy of him, he was very simple. He always said, any blue belt in our gym should be able to manage a fight with any other black belt from any other style. Doesn't mean that he's going to kick their asses, but should be able to manage. And me seeing it with my own eyes in competition, a blue belt or probably a purple belt from FFA, going at it with a black belt and not only kicking their asses, damage them and get them in a submission. It's like, bro, it tells you a lot. Yeah. Because he doesn't get, that's a good thing about it that he didn't, bro, it took me almost a decade to get a black belt. And that's yeah. how long it takes long you. Time. It takes it's, it takes, uh, that's it's how long, long it takes to get a doctor's degree. Yeah, like doctor's degree. Saying, bro. People I got, don't realize that. Doc. I got two doctor's degree they for you guys. <laughs> you know, all right? And I'm going for my third doctor's degree. 100%, dog. <laughs> you know, it it's takes my, a while, bro. My boy got his black belt, and now he's like, and then that's his favorite meme. He posts his shit like every three weeks. He's like, there's like a there's like a meme that says like, oh, doctor, it's like four years, bachelor, like it says like doctor, <laughs> seven years, bachelor, and black belt, ten years, and he keeps what he posts. Hey, like, what I, so we just call him Doctor Tariq uh, now. But, <laughs> I mean, it's good. We're but, like doctor. <laughs> he loves but, it. Doc. But if you really think about it, bro, that's how long it takes. You know, a real legitimate school. It's a long time. It's, it's a gonna lot of take L's, you that long. Like, yeah, bro. You L's, before bro. you actually, bro. And then, I mean, this is a philosophy I talk to all my students. I'm pretty sure you heard this before, and I'm a big believer in this. A uh, 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 black belt is a new white belt that never wants to quit. I'm always being a white belt, and I'm always going to be a white belt mentality, uh, no matter how many black belts I have out there. Because in the martial art mentality, you never stop learning. Nah, and the day that you think you, you know, already know everything, that's the day you're going to stop learning. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, that's it. You, you already shut down the walls. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's it. So, it's like, so to me, like, uh, it's just a color. Yeah. It's like, obviously, I show respect to it. I have respect to it because I have uh, the, all the codes so when it comes to true martial artists. But to me, it's just a, a color. Yeah, hell yeah, man. No, for sure. What do they say? It just covers two inches of your ass. Belt just covers no. two inches of your ass. You gotta cover the rest, you know? Mm. What do they say in MMA? Like, uh, and then MMA, is it like, oh, you get a black belt, you punch him once, he turns yeah, but into you might a become brown a brown belt. belt. Punch him twice, punch him he becomes a purple belt. And then he turns into yeah, a blue belt until he becomes a white belt. I think that's yeah. where FFA really thrive too. Like, they know how to beat black. Like, if you get a guy who's a jiu jitsu guy, like, and you get yeah. FFA like guy, like MMA, they'll figure it out. Yeah, they'll figure it like, out because. Uh, and the wrestling. FFA has great wrestling base yeah. and leg locks, bro. So, leg locks, one of the best. We Two learned. things that are good: leg locks and kimuras. Yeah, my and my game is kimura game. It's crazy, yeah. dog. Like my game is still the um is from that I learned from Coco the kimura system. Yeah. That's my best shit, dog. Kimura, yeah. It was it was invented by David. Ex yeah. And then David was the one that taught to everyone. And it's so I funny. Mean, we, I know the whole thing. And we all have good kimuras, anyway. dog, and arm bars, you know. Because of that, I mean, I Me believe too. you know, like uh, you can. I mean, personally, I cannot take any credit from them, you know, because I believe, because I seen so many competitions and I have never seen nobody doing the way how David created back then and he evolved because i gave it to marcos and marco influenced a lot of those things yeah. too you know it wasn't only david they both did it together but the one that exploded to another level was david yeah i was teaching uh i was teaching in singapore right when i mm. moved to singapore when i moved to thailand i got a so i got to stay in asia for so long i mm. went to thailand for just to learn muay thai to go train with joe ray he was there mm. and then um and then i had a friend who was teaching and living in a gym in singapore but he didn't want to go back he didn't really like it so then I remember him telling me about it, that he was living in some gym and teaching. And I'm like, damn, I would love to do that. That sounds dope. Mm. And then like two weeks go by, they want him to go back. And he doesn't want to go back because I think he had some, he was making some money in Thailand oh. already. He's like, yo, you want to go to Singapore? And I was like, yo, I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> and I thought Singapore was in China, dog, you know? And he's like, no, they speak English there. You're all right. Because it's like a brand new country. Yeah. The country's only like 50 years old. So like everything's modern. You know Is that everything like, oh, wow. Yeah. And they teach everybody. So the first language here is English so that they can have be like an international trading ground for like business and stuff. So well, that's smart. huge. That's so good. Like for, that's Chinese, really smart. Yes. Yeah, so you have that's like Chinese, really... Indian and Malaysian culture, but they all speak English. That's crazy. So I'm whenever they go teach and then I'm teaching the Kimura game that I know from, from Coco, right? Or that's where you got, got it from, from, David from Coco. And, yeah, yeah, I got it from Coco, really, because yeah. I was on FFA for like two or three months, like hmm. six months, I think, most. That's when he left and then you and went then he with him. And then he left and I just, I didn't, I just did because I was only So you turned with Chino, but yeah. because Chino went to him. 
Yeah, because Chino started. I shared with Chino when he started. I guess Chino did like a 30 day trial with Danny at FFA. Mm. And then, like, two years later, he came to FFA. That's when I started with Chino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, so. I remember Danny. Danny was, uh, he took around for longer because I trained with Danny for a long time. I, yeah. I saw Chino. I saw you, and I know you were training for a while. Chino probably went there once or twice, but he never joined the school from understanding. To FFA, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then he, he, knew he actually shit. started training. Yeah, he knew. But he started training, actually training, training uh, with Coco's. Coco. And That's I was already it. there. And I was so, already like okay, Coco's okay. senpai. So, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so we go back. All right, so we go, we go in that story. That's yeah, crazy. so I was like, Yuki, I was like, so yeah, when I was at FFA, I only used to take um, Coco's classes. Because mm. I liked him as a coach. So I would go to his 945 class. So whatever class he would teach you, was like, I would I'm just there. go, yeah. Okay. And then I go to the gym for a week, and I'm like... What the fuck's my coach? And I'm like, yo, where's Coco? And then nobody's talking about it. Everybody's like, no, nobody knows nothing. Hey. I'm like, what the hell? And I go in and like, I went in, like, Marcos is teaching one day, Dave is teaching, somebody else is teaching, Tulio. I'm like, what's going on here, dog? <laughs> and then um, somebody's like, yo, oh yeah, Coco. Somebody told me in the in the lobby, like, yo, I heard Coco left. And I was like, what? What? <laughs> and then I'm then somebody, I heard through the grapevine, like, oh yeah, he's at his, he's teaching at his mom's Taekwondo school. And I went, I went back home and I did like a crazy Google search. I like Googled like Taekwondo Miami and Rico Coco. And then like I found his parents' school. I called the parents' school and I talked to his mom. And I'm like, yo, where's Coco? And then, and then he called me back. And then I, and so I ended up finding him again or whatever. For the young buds, you know, now we can just Google. But back then, there was nothing like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Dog. I like, I called, yeah. I called his parents' gym, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And like, I called the gym, and then they called me back, and then he gave me his number, so. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, man. I'm I gonna lie to you, you know, uh, I mean, I still love him, you know, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, I was so close to literally kind of not walk away from FFA, but I want to go to to see what Coco was doing on the outside. Oh, yeah. But I guess the the reason why I didn't do it was because of the loyalty and respect that I already yeah, have for, sure, for FFA. Because I was already at FFA yeah. for a while. And I was like, bro, but Enrico is one of my coaches. Uh, yeah. but, it, but it was also Efren. Yes. And Tulio oh, back then, David and Marcos. This is where before David even left to california mm. so i have all these coaches so i was like coco was one of them so it wasn't like uh he was the only one yeah, yeah, yeah. so For i was sure. like damn it hurt it, it did hurt i ain't gonna let you i was like damn that sucks bro because it, one he was one of my teammates oh, slash yeah. coaches it's been hard, weird for a lot of you guys. Yeah, that's your boy. That's your So like, that was like, kind of like, it was One of your weird, best bro. training partners. That's when he was like, he yeah. was in his prime bro, dog. He, he, was, was, he just won Abu Dhabi. Bro, he, he was. He just bro, won the trials. Bro, he was the grappling back with that him time. in leg locks, bro. It was annoying. How like, lucky are we that we knew leg locks? Now it's blown up, but we're already ahead. Oh, of, yeah, we right, already know. Right, like, yeah, nobody's going to be doing yeah, the, not, different game. They got different entries, but I know what they're doing. Don't reap. Yeah. Yeah, they're giving all that. Bro, that's one thing I remember. Bro, that was like, one, I believe that he was, and I still believe that he's one of the best when oh, it comes to sure. like, bro, he's so fluid when it comes to those leg locks. Nasty. I mean, what would they call nowadays that's dirty jujitsu? I'm yeah. like, bro, what are you talking about, bro? Well, we've seen that for about 10, 15, 20 plus years Way that we're plus. doing that already easy yeah yo. now that, that you're about a boomba at car all that bs that uh, comes out and now yo you guys are dropping all to the bro that's different for sure i remember when dana hard remember when dana hard dvd came out and he was like why would you ignore half of your body i remember coco told me that like mm. 20 like 10 years ago coco's like yeah man you saw the other half of the body you gotta submit it and then that that became like a famous quote um oh you yeah, i brought two mm. water thank god Hey, uh, was it? Oh, I got sidetracked. I was gonna tell you, yo. Nah. So I was in Singapore teaching, right? I forgot why. Yeah, I, yeah, we were in Singapore. Story, yeah. Went on this whole rant. Hey. No, this guy goes to me. One of my students is like, "Oh, you got the Kimura Trap DVD?" Yeah. And I'm like, "What's that?" He's like, "Oh no, there's a, everything you're showing. It's from the DVD." And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And then he, and then he gives me the DVD. I'm like, "Oh shit, David's got a fucking DVD on this." Oh, uh, so that's so how you find was, out about that. <laughs> bro, but what I was showing is just from what Coco's showing. Right. And then right. When I got that DVD. He has Do no that. idea. That shit changed my game, dog. Then I got way better at coaching that shit. Cause then I was just like, I watched the whole DVD. I'm like, oh my god, this is like what I'm doing. But then I just cleaned up. Um, like more, like uh, more detail, like way uh, more yeah. details cleaned up. Cause I was just a purple belt teaching him alone in Singapore, dog. Mm. So it was a lot for me at that time. I was like a little bit nervous, you know. I, right, right. I didn't really have no experience teaching, you know. I was like a good purple belt competing, and I had like a couple amateur fights. Right. And now I'm teaching all these people, uh, all in these people and all like, these guys are in a different at me, country. In a different country, dog. So I was like yeah, teaching. Yeah, that's a lot, bro. It's crazy. That's Living a lot, in the gym. Bro, respect. Yeah, yeah. Dog. I was like on an um, yo, four classes a day, and you teach fucking uh, beginners class, gi, no gi, and then MMA. 
Yeah, like Monday through Friday, it was like that. It was wow. like that, bro. It was good. How long you were over there? Pardon? Yeah, over there. How, teaching how long? Other, yeah. Uh, bro, 2000, almost nine years, son. Yeah. Damn. Nine bro. years living over there. And then I would come visit for like a month. The most time I spent coming back home. So I guess like it's because of the passport, the visa, or what was it? To come back home? Yeah. Coronavirus, dog. The pandemic. Oh, yeah. I do. I heard that yeah, from, yeah, me, Tino bro. told me and Claudia also told me the, the story that because... Huh? How'd you survive over there? No, it was good. So I was in Thailand. Uh, the I mean, Thailand is cool, bro. You can live like a like a king over there. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you know, like you have to visas, know how to manage. It adds up. You gotta know. Yeah. You have to know how to manage your money the proper way over there because over there making money, they don't pay you for shit. That's the thing. That's. And oh. everything you spend is gone forever. You know. Yeah. I got lucky that I got a job. So in Thailand, I was doing the Singapore thing once in a while, and then in Thailand, uh, my coach. Was like I did the tryouts, so I got on the fight team. You know, which is uh, Tiger Muay Thai, right? Yeah, yeah. I did the Tiger Muay Thai tryouts. I didn't get on the real fight team. I got like on the B team. Right. Where, I mean, like they picked the the five guys, right. and then I was like, "Fuck, I didn't get picked." But I was a lot older than most of the guys. I was already like 27, and I only had one pro fight because I started training late. But okay. I was pretty good. I was like at the same level. Right. But then they pulled me aside. They're like, "Yo, look, you didn't get on the team. You didn't get called out. But we're gonna give you free training and um and free food." Or something like that. Free right. training or... And then, yeah. and they I mean, just the fact that you're saying training, that I mean, that's for any fighter. Yeah. And I was like sold. And, hey, then, sold. Uh, <laughs> and I was living in my boy's couch. So I lived for free and my boy's couch. Oh, so you're already like yeah. right there. Two big things in, uh, in hey, Thailand. 100%. Right there. Saving and was, money. Yeah. And then I was training for free and then I just started living off my fights, which was kind of hard, you know? Yeah, no, but... It's just go to crazy. Thailand. Go, that's when we go to China and take fights. But that's the thing, bro. Like... You don't know who you're fighting, and you don't hardly have preparation. You just gotta yeah, take it because it's like, fuck. You, get you the remind money, me you know? of um, Cla Claudia told me similar stories. Oh, Claudia's yo, Claudia was fighting Muay Thai like two, three That's times crazy, a week. Dog. I was doing MMA. So at least She's you were getting paid a little bit more. I was getting paid way more, dog. Because I know for fun, when it comes like to a, Muay Thai, is top chain. In China, I was getting two thousand dollars for a fight USD. Mm. Come back to Thailand, you're doing good, bro. That's yeah, you're doing good because they're trying to say, yeah, it's good. But for her, she was doing like Muay Thai for like hundred fifty dollars, two hundred dollar fights. Bro. Sometimes. Bro, you get it, bro. That's why when I find Knees, out about the elbows. payment, bro, they told me about the fights and uh, because I actually when it's funny that you said that, I went to Thailand to do all this thing just uh, FFA style. But I, you know, I said, you know what? I seen how they do it. I see how everything they do. You know what? I'm gonna do my own way. I'm gonna be with the team, but I'm gonna choose what to do, what not to do. And I remember, obviously, the first part was to go to Yokao Gym, which is Sencha is. Mm -hmm. So I actually I went to Yokao, stayed there for a week and a half, and actually in Bangkok. In Bangkok. Oh, Yokao! Oh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah. I was there for. They, did they go to Bangkok? Did you guys go to Bangkok? I was in Bangkok with the with the team, and then from the from Bangkok they end up f flying to Phuket. Yeah. So, but I stay in Yokao. I actually stayed there for longer. So in they in Bangkok. Training so, in a real Thai gym. Yeah, Thai, that was strictly Thai That's style. That's real Thai bro. style. Phuket is like watered down Thailand. Yeah. And, um, and I saw, um, what was it? I saw Sanchai. I also saw Sinda, which is also an, another um, Muay Thai champion. And then the other guy, I forgot the name of it. He was a brand new champion at uh, 143, 44. Nasty Muay Thai guy. Probably young, probably like 22. Yeah, yeah, bro. It was like, 18, bro. Nine, like they, uh, between 18 to 22. They burn out. They, they retire yeah, like 25. Yeah, bro. Because if you were saying the burnout with the baseballs, bro, same thing crazy, with martial bro. arts stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, bro. Bro, they start since they little freaking kicking each other, elbow each other. Bro, that's crazy, bro. You, you just think about that, doing that to your body at that young age when your body is not even grown. Your bones still now. And they're throwing, yo, six years old, six and seven. They're getting knocked out already. Elbows, knees, they're getting, getting knocked, knocked out, out. Oh, kicking out, bro. That's crazy. I mean, I, did, I gave them respect, but that's crazy. Nah, I wouldn't let my kid get like. I wouldn't if I had a kid. I wouldn't let him get hit in the brain until he's twenty, dog. Yeah, but I don't know crazy. how I'm gonna get my kid to fight because I don't want him to get. I want him wrestling and jujitsu, but I don't want the punches, dog. No, I'm so Because I know those punches add up, dog. And we yeah, know they that, add up you know? with time, bro. It's gonna be like a Mayweather. Even Mayweather still kind of fucking stutters a little bit and shit, because yeah. you know. And even then, that he has a good movement when it comes to it. You know, his style is exactly. That's, that's what crazy. I'm saying. This so, guy who never got touched, and even just you just to, to show, just show. for a little bit. Yeah, man. So you can imagine. Crazy, oh, it's crazy, dog. bro. It's crazy. Respect, bro. Respect. Yeah, it's wild. Dan, so you were in Bangkok training in the Bangkok. Gym. Yeah, I was cool, actually man. training, uh, and actually, uh, I was planning to stay for longer, but you know, I was like, no, you know what? The whole team left to Phuket, so I like, fuck it, you know, let me. I'm gonna stay uh, 
two, three days more. So I stayed for a week and a half. And I said, you know what? I'm going to buy my ticket and go to Phuket and meet with the team. Same thing. Same mentality. You know, I'm going to be with the team, but I'm going to do my own thing. That's you know, and I, because the way how they were doing it is like uh, one guy will fire, basically had this old project. It's like, okay, this is what we're going to do today, tomorrow, and the next follow in. I'm like, okay, whatever I like, I will do it with you guys. Or whatever I don't, I will just do it on my own. And uh, because I heard a lot of story before I went to Thailand, I was like, oh, yeah, this school is good. This school is not good. This school is not good. Schools. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it out myself. Yes. Do it myself. And then I'm going to have my own personal opinion about the place. So I tried out my Tiger Multi. I tried out Phuket Top Team. I tried out AKA. And I forgot the other y -A -Y -M Multi. I forgot the name of that one. Muay Thai, uh, there's a dragon. It was it on the road or was it? Yeah, it was on road. It was on road. They got dragon Muay Thai. It might have been like Y and M Muay Thai. Y and M Muay Thai, there, right there. But uh, they had a dry, They have a few different Muay Thai gyms on Tiger Road. Yeah, on Tiger Road. Yeah. The Tigers always been known for not having good Muay Thai. They're known for having like very um, watered down, like tourist Muay Thai. Yeah, tourist Muay Thai. Yeah. It's like it was like um, LA Fitness, you know, like. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you. The one that uh, caught my attention personally, me. Me trying all of those gyms, it was actually AKA and Phuket. When I went over there. You AKA Phuket? Yes. I don't think that. I don't, I don't know because AKA I brought, was I got. Was there AKA then? I don't think it was an AKA, yeah. Then. But back then when I was there, AKA was already open. They already have a big freaking gym or the multi Thai. They had already the, the gym on the second floor with the weights. And then on the other side, they had the closed room, which was for the Gi Jiu Jitsu, oh. for the grappling. So when I went there, they was they already ready, and I knew that they were already opening another spot, which it was gonna be for the basketball. But I didn't see that because by back then they were still not ready. Oh. After I came back to United States, I started like looking because I followed them. I noticed how oh, they did a basketball uh, court there. So that was yeah. cool. Yeah, and then Phuket, I remember uh, this is uh, when there a lot of badass fighters was there. Like I know there was a bunch of multi champions because I trained with them. Uh, the time that I was there. So that's the reason why I like Phuket and, and AKA because both of them, they have a lot of champions that they were training in the fight team. Yeah. So I got the chance to train with all of them in Muay Thai. And that nice. was my main. And they even tell me all the time, oh, you're a American fighter. I'm like, yeah, why, why you don't try it out and you help out the team? I'm like, nah, bro, I came to Thailand for Muay Thai. Yeah, Muay Thai. And I'm like, I could do all of the stuff, but yeah. I already, the best thing, honestly, personally, not no respect, but it's in the United States. Yeah. If I want to have judo, I just go to the United States. If I want to have jiu-jitsu, right now it's the United States. So, Thailand, you want the Muay Thai. Like, Thailand, to me, was like, oh, but the Muay Thai. For sure. You know, I did some other, other stuff, but it was mainly Muay Thai when I was there. Yeah, this is what happened to me, bro. I'll tell you what. I, I wish I can go back in time. I would still go back. I would still go back for like a year or two and just because, all right, I went there with that same mentality. I'm going to fucking Muay Thai. Oh, when my first month there, I didn't even do jujitsu and wrestling. This is what kind of fucked me up when I went to Singapore. Mm. I was in Thailand for five weeks, and I was getting ready. For, I fought Muay Thai, and then um, I was training. And then uh, I was just doing straight Thai style, and I was becoming like, really good at Muay Thai, getting sharp by kicks, elbows, knees, clinch. And then I went to Singapore to teach jujitsu and grappling. And, and you haven't done nothing for like five I weeks. I hadn't rolled for five weeks. Dog. Ooh, and I so go you're strictly striking. And I'm not only that, I'm teaching gi, where I never really trained in the gi. I'm uh, teaching a fucking gi class, yeah. I'm teaching a no gi class, and I'm rolling like, and I'm like, holy shit, I haven't rolled in five weeks, and I'm, in like, a new, <laughs> and I'm in a new country, in a new gym, rolling with all these kids, and they all oh, want to yeah. fuck up the coach, dog. Yeah, so they're, like, they're trying to prove. It was a Time fight to... of my life, dog. I'm like, oh my God. I remember the first day in Singapore, I'm like, yo, what did I do? I fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I was like, why did I sign up for it, you know? Uh, but, uh, but then what happened was I started fighting MMA. Hmm. And I drew, I got away from the Muay Thai because I kept fighting MMA hmm. and I kept fighting a striker. And what was the game plan? Take him down and submit him. So I was always training from MMA fights in Thailand, but I'm in the MMA room the whole time. Right. And I didn't embrace the Muay Thai culture like I should have, dog. You know, like I, feel, yeah. I should know a lot more clinch and more nice tricks. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right, right. Where I'm like, damn, bro, I was in Thailand. I was there for eight years, dog. Now I'm gonna go back for the next year and then just like learn everything I should have learned. You know? Okay, okay, I see what you mean. Does that make sense? Like I'm yeah, yeah no, I get you. Then you get into MMA mode, so I'm just with the MMA team training MMA mm. fights. And then when I had a fight, I would like try to jump into Muay Thai classes here and there, but I should have done more Muay Thai, dog. You know? What I'm saying? I see what you mean. Yeah. But hey. I feel you, like, uh, that's I mean, that's what that, I did, bro. bro. That's like, and then when I came back over here, bro, it's a different, bro. Like, all these coaches want to be what they call crew 
crew. Oh my god, it's that's like, hilarious! Bro. This guy comes, they go to Thailand. I love that, bro. These guys, they have that insignia. They have that all over the world, bro. The guy goes to Thailand for a month and he comes back and starts. Talking. Nah, he's doing the like. He's like a, hey, what's hi, up, man? Hi, oosh, hi. Oosh. He's like, Yo, shut the fuck up, dog. Just say hello, shake my hand, bro. We're not in Thailand, dog. You know. He's like, come on, cups. What do you got? Like, <laughs> You know, but it's funny that you're... The guy yeah. just wants to go to... LA. It's the guy who goes to LA Fitness with his Muay Thai shorts and sneakers. You know, I'm like, it, bro, we get it. You, you know, it's funny that you say that, you know. Um, I mean, I was at least the only one. I mean, I don't know you, but I was the only one in the whole group when I came back from Thailand. Actually, me personally, I enjoy the Thai music when it comes to training. That's dope, right? I don't know why, but uh, to me, it wasn't annoying. So I was so into the Thai music that I was like, you know what, fuck this. When I start teaching uh, striking, I'm going to start just teaching all the Muay Thai. And I'm going to put mu Thai music. That's gangster, yeah. And over there, I bro, people are fucking bitching. I mean, you mother. Oh, for real? Like, Take that shit out, bro. That shit is fucking annoying. I'm like, bro, are you kidding me, bro? Why not? It's like, actually, it's actually cool, very traditional, bro. Like, why do you want to lose the things that we used to do over there every day? We were training two, three times a day, muta, and yeah. what you do, you hear that dee, 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 all the time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you really embrace yourself in the culture. Oh, that. hell yeah, bro. I, I, I tell you, I did, uh, my mentality was, I mean, every time that I travel, I always go back to one of my philosophy. Uh, the philosophy is to put myself just like the other person in the, in the country. Um, I did in Thailand where I even, well, I tried to do it with it, but they didn't let me actually leave like a fighter in the gym. Yeah. And then, and then one thing, uh, when it comes to Tiger Muay Thai, AK okay, and all this gym, they have a huge gym. No, bro. And, and, and like Jokao, Jokao, you seen the guy, bro, small. is, wait, no, this is a big room. And this room, there are probably about eight to 10 fighters. Yeah, Jokao is small, right? Because it's Super Bangkok, small. it's a big city, bro, like in the New York small. City. They will have the little spot, and I walk there, and they have the little bed, and they're all little things, and that's where they sleep, and as uh, they wake up, they take a shower right there, and they go to, uh, right there, the gym. And they all eat together. And they all and eat after together. After training, they all yeah. eat, and they yeah, all sit down right in the room, and they start eating, they all clean shit. their stuff, and that was like, and I was uh, embracing that to do it, but I couldn't do it because I was American from the outside. You had to be part of the gym, uh, part of the team to be able to do that. Yes. So I, what I ended up doing, uh, what, what do you call this? Um, it's not an hotel. It's a hostel. Hostels. Uh, I yeah. think uh, where you basically rent a room where there's like all the random people. Yeah, in a it. hostel. Like you could, yeah, you used to get like bunk beds. Bunk beds, yeah. You get a bunk and and you I get... was like, you know what? Let me do this, you know, because I, I, I really trying to feel like the the, the worst of the worst. Yeah. And even in the street with the, with the little cars that are in the street, I was like, bro, I'm going to try to do everything as possibly I can to feel how to be a Thai guy here yeah. and, you know, uh, like a poor person. Even then that I got dollars, I'm going to try to do my best to... And like I'm, live as a person, like live with the people. Like not yeah. be, You don't want to do the tourist shit. Like, yeah. Like, it's all the I nice didn't. I mean, nice don't, don't get me wrong. I did the tourist porn. Yeah. Uh, but my mentality was, you know, I want to embrace the culture here. Yeah. And I actually enjoy it. And I, very, uh, I learned a lot from it. And mainly the Thai, the Muay Thai. And the philosophy of how they think about the, the religions, which was actually very respectful for it, you know. That's what I love about Thai culture, bro. You know, there's not a lot of crime there because they're Buddhists and they believe in reincarnation. So they don't really do harm because they don't want harm done back in them. And they feel if they do bad energy, they're going to get it back. You know what I'm saying? So, like, the crime is pretty low there. Even it's though, pretty Even low. though it's very poverty-stricken, there's not, like, a lot of, like, uh, crime. You know what I'm saying? In the tourist areas, they're going to, like... They're gonna. They, 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 they're they gonna try to hustle you. They're gonna hustle you. They're gonna hustle yeah, you yeah, in the yeah. tourist areas. And like, if you're going out and getting girls and shit, don't be surprised if these girls rob. If you get drunk and pass out, the girls are gonna rob you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you're like that. But that's when you're in that. But when you're in the Muay Thai and you're in the actual part with real Thai people where they don't really deal with tourists too much, right? You don't have because the tourism does a little bit back stigma a little bit. You know? Right. Right. Because you know we get the savages that come over there and just go crazy. Dog. Yeah, but, you know, bro. <laughs> that's so a lot of people us. go to Thailand, bro. You know, exactly. like the, the what's it called? The movie, the Hangover. Hangover. Over, you know <laughs> exactly i always tell people there's two types of people in thailand you got the one percenters like the savages that go over there and like give up everything to go learn martial arts you know right. and you know people who do it like all different types of people do it right there'll be like a big fat guy and he'll just want to do a fitness journey and move to thailand for six hmm. months so you got those people which are like the go-getters and the motivational people right but then you got the crazies you know the crazy motherfucker that are there just to party. get loose and they're like they, i'm in thailand ah! you 
know? And they're like, all right, so you got to be careful. And then the the, fi- the lions, the hairs cross once they cross, yeah. So you got to be careful, dog. You got to be on your P's and Q's, you know? Exactly. I know exactly what you're coming from uh, with all of that. <laughs> yo, so you're fighting MMA. You fight Bantamweight, right? Bantamweight. Your whole uh, career? Uh, no, I did a featherweight and Bantamweight. Yeah. I did uh, the beginning, but uh, then I started switching it out to Bantamweight. So Bantamweight is better for me. Huh? You started with featherweight? Uh, I started a few times I did featherweight, uh, but then I went to bantamweight. So I was switching off, uh, but it was the switching off at uh, last second. Is either the guy didn't make way, so I had to make way for them to be able to make the fight happen. Mm-hmm. So the fight they would consider as a featherweight because all these motherfuckers were unprofessional. It's probably hard to get, ma- yeah, especially when you started fighting MMA in Miami. Like, um, it was probably hard to get matched up. Oh yeah, you know it was, like, bro. That was, so I ain't gonna lie to bro. Two, three by, gyms, back then, and then uh, you might get a pullout if you cancellation. Forget bro, about it. A lot of guys I'm, in Miami, I know a lot of guys been training a long time, and they haven't got those fights in because like fucking. The but shit, there crazy, was a time bro. in my career that was so hard to get a fight because not not only they are set it, but they when they find out who I was. They always cower. So it was hard, bro, to actually com- uh, get a fighter to commit to me. And there was a time, bro, I was like, bro, like, the, bro, you're a fighter or what? Like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> oh, like, were you telling people, like, people, were people, like, wondering, right? Or yeah, like, wonder, like, why, why they didn't want to fight me? Because I, not to brag about, but I was a hot shit. There was uh, some point that I was a hot shit and that nobody wants to fight me. So they were saying, no, bro, this is a, a tricky fight. fight. Then your fight for me, I went away right now. You know, that, that's what I like the point. I was like, bro, it's gotten to a point that I was getting frustrated. And then that's where I started looking at it. You know, I might have to start looking fights outside because here, I mean, just getting older and this is not happening. Yeah. And uh, thank God all these promotions start coming in down, then things change a little bit. Yeah, you're right. With the pandemic, a lot of promotions came to Miami, right? Because when yeah, everybody shut down, shut down, the show bro, kept going crazy. to Miami, yeah. though. That's they crazy. Yeah. Because we were the only ones that were yeah. fucking like, out oh, where car? What? <laughs> That's why I moved back. I was in lockdown, bro. I was in Bangkok, right? I moved to Bangkok. And then when I was in Bangkok, um, because I was in Thailand teaching in Tiger Muay Thai. I got a good job there. I was teaching beginner's class, MMA, and Jiu-Jitsu. I was rolling, but then when the COVID came, the gym shut for like two months. And then when it opened back up, we were teaching. We were only getting half salary. Mm. So we're doing the same work, but only getting half the money. So I'm like, oh, this is kind of rough, you know? So then I got offered a job in Bangkok. I went to Bangkok. I went to start doing comedy. So I went to go to like the city and shit. Mm. I was a little bit tired of Phuket, dog. Some shit went down. And then when I went to Bangkok, because um, in the beginning of the pandemic, everybody was locked down. But COVID in, my, in Thailand, they closed the borders right away. And we so had that means that nobody can get in nobody or nobody can, can get out. And nobody can get in and you can get out, but don't, it's going to be hard to get back no. in. So they closed down the border, so then it was like the people that were there were stuck, but there was no COVID for a while. Or they weren't really testing, so they were just like... Whatever. Like, they, uh, they, you're everything, doing... was open, everything was open, but like really restricted, you know? So it was kind of chill. Were you wearing the mask already or yeah, not? Yeah, oh, mask every, everywhere. Oh, it so. was crazy oh. strict. Yo, they, be, they give you a fine, 20,000 baht fine if you get caught without a mask. Oh, Since okay, the beginning it's... of the pandemic, I'm super parent dog. Everywhere I go, always have five masks because you don't want to be dry, and especially if you're a foreigner, dog. You don't want to be a white guy driving. Yeah, right, guy. right. Because they're gonna, gonna be trying to. Gonna, and then they think you're rich when yeah, you're, right, if you're right. white and you're over there. They think you're fucking right, paid, right. Dog. That you got something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they're gonna try and hustle you up, you know. But uh, when I got to Bangkok, they had a second wave, and then they went on lockdown again. And then when on lockdown, when Miami was open, and everybody in Miami's like living it, yeah, living, living it, up. you were watching all and of I'm this, and you're like, I'm on nine o'clock curfew in my in my room in Bangkok, like going crazy, dog. Like, my gym dog, is shut, dog. and we're training in the dark. Damn. So I'm running in the MMA. I was the head coach of this gym in Bangkok. I had a good squad, but we're training it like you were sneaking in the back door. Like mm. every time, like uh, I'm like mad, paranoid that the cops are gonna come. Like I will come out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, I... <laughs> and a bunch of men, and it was all, all most of my students were all expats, like foreigners. So imagine like a Thai cop comes in, sees a bunch of so white guys yeah, in the gym, uh, we're fucked, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I came back to Miami, though. That's what made me come back, bro. You know yeah, I mean? it's funny they and said also that because co- and also comedy because I wanted to start doing the comedy shit. You know, so what that's what I, yeah, so. we're telling me. You know, it's funny that you told me this story because um, Chino and Claudio were telling me the story. Yeah, our boy uh, Emilio over there, the he's going through all of this right now. The shit over there is not easy. That's why Claudio also came down here. That's right. Dog. And yes. and then he told me I was like, bro, is it like that bad over there right now? I was like, yeah, shit, it's over there. It's really really difficult right now, especially with the COVID nineteen. So I was like, oh damn, I thought Miami was bad, but uh, compared nah, to other nah, places, nah, nah. Miami, well, Miami was open though. It was good. They kept it going. You yeah, they kept saying? it going. There was a time that I'm gonna let you the the first two times I stopped it, which was February, February, March, bro, that was bad. Because yes. I remember everything closed down. You couldn't even be there. Bro, literally, I remember the first month when I went out. Well, I was going out, but it was very rare. I had to go out for a specific reason. Yeah. I remember about four weeks after the shutdown went, 
bro, you literally would drive in the street. Every time you get to Palmetto, bro, it was like a like a ghost city. You would Miami. not see a car in Palmetto. Bro, this was crazy. It's like, bro, I, for a moment I was like, damn, I wish Palmetto would be like this all the time. That Even was nice, when, right? Like, it was nice. Bro, but uh, it, it was nice, but at the same time it was scary because you were the only fucker driving in the expressway with fucking five lines. You would probably see one car coming the other way and you were the one going in. And you're like, bro, is the car stop me here right now because I'm the only asshole over here driving? <laughs> Holy you, shit. You can get stopped with... No, but I didn't were, get stopped. Thank God. But you couldn't. You couldn't. Be, they didn't want you on the streets and shit. Yeah, they didn't want you on the street. Uh, but I fuck. remember there was serious, really serious. Bro, you didn't see no no cars, and then you had to. Over, I remember. I mean, I know how how difficult it was for others, but uh, you had to get to a point that you had to get out for a purpose. And yeah. if they call you outside, and you just oh, you fucking around, like, you had the reasons. Yeah, the reasons. Every time we were going out, it was get because. Yeah, no. I gotta get a toilet, bro, or grocery or something, you know. But you have to be doing something. Yeah. And I mean, so far, I never got caught at the time. And I, it's funny because I was sneaking into the gym, bro. It, it got to a point that I was driving myself crazy, bro. We talked to each other and through social media. I was like, bro, there's a way that we can get together and we can train, bro, because I can't take this no more, bro. I was training by myself inside my house without getting out, bro. Bro, it was driving me crazy. That shit was, was like uh, being in jail, bro. Yeah, they did a number on us, bro. Imagine, uh, them, and we're lucky that we're a little bit older. About these younger kids that were locked in and stuff like that with their mental health. I don't even want to know, bro. So you imagine that, bro? And then you become like a hermit. You get used to always being home. And then, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like you get locked in your homes and you kind of get in, set into your rhythm, you know? It's like they almost programmed us for that shit, dog. Yeah, it's nah, weird, yeah, That's dog, crazy, you know? bro. Yo, so Bantamweight, what's it like... Um, is it hard for you? To, it's got to be hard making better. Do you have a dietitian or a nutritioner, yeah, nutritionist I, to help actually, you make Actually, I weight? have my good understanding of myself. You know, I have a degree on um, personal fitness. Oh, dope. And I have a very good understanding of nutrition. Um, not saying I'm a master, but I have a very good understanding. I did a lot of seminar when it comes to cutting weight, uh, nutrition. Oh, nice. Yeah, wow. I, did, I did my uh, kind of information when I was at FFA. Like we, Lockhart? You yeah. Like Lockhart, Lockhart diet? Oh, I used to do a Lockhart, Lockhart diet for years, one, dog. Chicken I have nuts. My, you ever eat the chicken and nuts? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, you done that shit. Dog, when I used to make Bantamweight, that That's shit was a, crazy, a, dog. That, we're talking about what? Four ounce boiled chicken and ten, six nuts. We're and talking then about something. eight, ten years? Bro. He got good at it. About, I want to say, bro, I forgot, bro, because I remember before I got him in seminars, we brought him because he was the number one in the UFC doing all these things with all these fighters. Yep. So how, that's how I find out about him. With the I really dehydration, ha- I learned how to yeah, dehydrate from him. Yeah, dehydration too. I already have my style. Uh, there was two groups in, in our gym. It was my group that I had my, my people, and then there was another group that had um, other people that but were kind of, we were the same team. But one way, one group had their own way how to do it, and my group had their own way how to do it. So I already knew how to do all this stuff. But we decided to bring this guy to educate ourselves because you, you you don't know everything. So I like, you know what, this guy is, and I've been hearing about this guy, you know what, let's bring him up, let's, let's pitch in everyone together, and let's pay him, that way he could do a seminar for us. And they did a seminar, what was it, two, three hours, something like that, I remember. Wow. And, bro, there was a good information there. Not only with him, I did it with a couple other people. Um, and um, I, I, that's the way I got educated when it that's comes to so cutting smart. weight, bro. You had to, bro. Now, these days, it's all science, bro. Science. I'm so glad you say that, bro. So when your students can hear this too, and, you're, and everybody who hears this is going to know that when they're fucking with you, that you're not... Pl- yeah, 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 and I was just you're telling edu- you, nah, motherfucker, educated, I'm educated, bro. You're educa- like I you, read. You, yeah, like, not only, like, yeah, you have the experience, but you also do, you're also looking at the science yeah. behind it. So you you're understand. Always, it's always about science, bro, when it comes to this... Evolution, baby. Uh, evolution, samurai, bro. Dog, you yeah, gotta bro. know everything, you know? You gotta know everything, bro. When it comes to this, uh, uh, I have a very entrepreneur mentality. When it comes to all of this, you know, uh, and martial arts, I believe in martial arts one way, but you also have to, there's one thing, that, it's funny, that it's like a bottle. I'll give you the sample that Tulio told me this about Tulio, dog. Tulio, Shout bro. Out to Tulio. 12 to 14 legend. years ago. Shout out to you, bro. <laughs> I remember the first time I thought, we have a very serious talk. We always had a serious talk, but there was one day that he brought a bottle of water and he told me, bro, you got to remember this right here. You're a fighter. But you got to represent yourself like this bottle of water. You notice uh, this bottle of water has like a bunch of different bottles. They have all different brands. Well, guess what? You're just one brand right now. I'm another brand. So how well you sell this bottle of water, it's up to you. You could be the best motherfucker out there. You can know how to fight. But if you don't know how to sell yourself, you're nobody. 
So that 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 shit when he told me that shit it stuck to me. And in everything that I do, that that I do to this day, I always had that men mentality with the bottle. It's like, bro, I'm a bottle. And the same thing I talk to all my students. I tell them, oh, you motherfucker, you don't know nothing. You might know how to throw a punch, throw a kick, and know how to take down somebody and know how to submit. But guess what? That's only one percent of what you need to know in this sport. It's a whole, cause it's a whole. Thing, There's a whole bro. thing. Not, it's not back just then. fighting. Yeah. It's marketing. It's, so you, you have to know how to you market. You gotta value yourself. Like you gotta you value you gotta yourself. You gotta learn how to make money, bro. Yeah. That's one thing about Avalon and these guys. They're fucking. They don't they, play, dog. They anything don't play. Anything that guy right. touches, bro. Anything Marcos yeah. touches turns to gold, dog. That's one thing that I. I, I that's what I'm very grateful. It's a hustler uh, holic, bro. Dog. Just like what we're talking about early, right now, a few hours. I don't even know how many hours we're talking about. The first thing that I... I hour, hour one of the <laughs> fucking three-hour cast. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, bro, the one thing I noticed, and this is not to talk bad about, and it sucks, and I try to do the best for my for my students. Every person that does martial arts and is a fighter, I want to say about 80 to 90% of them, they're not educated. And it sucks, bro, because it's like, bro, it's like they see us like a, a bunch of, a, what like, cool, like street fighters. Yeah. Like, 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 uh, a, like, like boneheads. Like, like boneheads that just yeah. fight. Like, you, you, all, no you know, you had to do a punch, you know. And the one thing I talk to them all the time, bro, yes, I'm going to teach you how to do this and all of this. But, bro, you need to learn how to work on knowledge. Yeah. Read, uh, listen to podcasts, listen to motivation videos, re, uh, watch documentaries. You know, the best thing you can do is read books, learn from other people's mistakes, self grow, uh, self development books, and all these things. Because, bro, I'm telling you, fighting is not going to be forever. Nah, it's a short, it's not, short it's window. It's a very bro. short window. It's like any sport. You do any sport, athlete, uh, any, uh, your basketball, baseball, hockey, uh, golf, they all have a time period. And you could be the best you can, but uh, at the end of the day, bro, there's going to be a second part of it. If you don't know what to do with the second part, the first part is going to be very short. Let's say if you're lucky, let's say in MMA, how much uh, can you do? About 20, 25 probably. If you push it, if you take oh, care of your body, years, years? like years oh, of bro, fighting. 25. Is like, That's pushing it, right? And in luck, and it depends when you, like you were saying too, the burnout. The burnout. So. Oh, the other part is like what type of style you are. You know, like if you're the, the, the brawler. How long are you going to take? You're not going to Six gonna years. Take. I can tell you right now, yeah. dog. <laughs> My shit fucking expired quick. I was trying to do the broader route. Not good, guys. Move your fucking head. Learn defense and be in shape, all right? Cause then you got the guy, like, for example, like a Mayweather type of thing. You know, like, dodge 30 everything. 30 years, but then he can fight. for. Then you can... Yo, listen. You see what I mean? Volkanovski hasn't been touched in a long time, yeah. and he's 34, and he's, like, kidding his prime yeah, right now. Yeah, but he's kidding. But, but in MMA... You don't, because you, can, you can't take the damage. You can't take the damage. One, but uh, let's be real. Like, in MMA... I mean, from my understanding, this is my point of view of what I see and what I learned my experience. I want to say this, uh, the experience of taking you know, what we call the prime uh, for the male and female. Well, male is a little bit different from female. I want to say it goes from 28 to 36. Oh, really? Well, that's, that's, motivation that's, then, dog. That's, that's what I noticed. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm all right then. I'm I am. I ain't going to lie to you, bro. I'm, only, I'm on my last year then. I right. still got two more years to pass my prime, bro. I can still yeah. do that. Right? But I'm letting you, I mean, that's what I'm talking to you for my experience with what I've seen. Because right? man's strength. Yeah, man's strength. Not only that is the time that you've been putting in the gym and also the man TV, bro. I can tell you, the guy that I was in my 20s to the guy that I was now, 10... Technique-wise, it could be better. I probably knew the technique already back then, but the knowledge and the wisdom that I had now to what I was back then, yeah, if I would have had that when I was in my 20, bro, oh, my God. Poor the person that I would have been facing. Well, that's the amazing thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I will kill you just with my mindset. You're right. Listen, and this is the best thing about MMA. You're right, dog. This is why it's kind of like an older man's sport. Because it is an older man's sport. If, you if really I'm going to fight a kid who's 24 years old, all I'm thinking in my head is just mentally and mentality-wise, I'm going to fuck. I, th I feel like I'm going to be I'm gonna be like, yo, when this kid, like we were saying before, when this kid was in his mom's scrotum, I was out here training with the best in the world. You yeah. Know? So you kind of... And then, um, yeah, the, the the mentality, you got to be mature in your brain. And then the experience, dog. There's only one way to get that 10 years yeah. of experience. You know what I'm saying? So then like, you got if the... you're 23, even if you're, even if you're 23 and you've been training your whole life, the first seven years you were training as a child, yeah, you didn't you're have still... that man's So like... You're, you're a child, you're a baby. Exactly. You're, still, you're still learning, you know? Yeah, and no. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like uh, one thing that surprised me the most is uh, the evolution of MMA, like, the young young generation can do the things that I can. Uh, I took me. Well, it took me a year to learn. 
they're doing it in two, three months. I know, dog. That's that's true. But the reason why is because all of us, of us <laughs> you know, like me going through all of that all the time, me doing the uh, mistake and mistake and mistake and mistake, I learn it. And you know what? Let me show it to you this way because this way is better. Because if you go this way, I'm telling you, that's not going to work. Uh, I have a theory on that. Yes, it's true. I feel like, okay, Australian MMA has blown up in the last 10 years. I don't mm. know if you noticed, right? Like, uh, oh, yeah, Australian, it was sucked like about 10 years ago. They didn't know look, shit. Now, look, um, uh, Whitaker. That's one. Um, Volkanovski, the two mm. champs, right? So they mm. already got two champions, which is crazy Easy. that in like 10 years of like, like 15 years, qu pretty quick, they got two champions. What is it, like in the five, five, plus five years? And that's they have no wrestling. They have no wrestling base over there. Yeah. They don't really have no striking base over mm. there. You know what I'm saying? And But you know what they have? They have the advantage of 20 years of us doing it wrong. And like of 20 years of like the first 10 years of like guys of your generation like doing... Um, All these mistakes. How long did we learn wrestling from a straight wrestling coach? And he runs class like a wrestling practice. And he, mm -hmm. how many takedowns did you learn that we would never fucking hit? And that would not fight? work. Yeah. Or setups and tie-ups. You know what yeah. I mean? Because before we would just train like Muay Thai... Mm -hmm. We go to boxing class. We go mm -hmm. to, you know what I'm saying? But the newer generation, they're learning MMA as a whole, and they're able to. And so, like this is what I say with the Australians with the wrestling. They got so good at the wrestling because they learned. They all the wrestling coaches know what works for MMA and what doesn't. Yeah. So they're learning like so they don't MMA even waste wrestling. time. So they don't waste time. They're cutting all out of the fat. Right. Um, Volkanovski and Israel Adesanya, a lot of the guys who train at City Kickboxing, mm -hmm. I, like I know, how, bro, the way they train, I know how they train and prepare, dog, like in jujitsu. They're not learning jiu-jitsu. Like, a lot of these newer guys are not learning. Like, MMA guys aren't learning jiu-jitsu. Like, I learned jiu-jitsu. Like, close guard, arm bar, trying. Some of these guys, they're strikers. They're just learning how to get up. Right. Get up. That's it. Fight the hands. You get in a position We're that you know what. We get taken out. We stay in our guard, and we go for the yeah. overhook. And it's like, you're yeah. just killing all that. Like, how many how many fights have we wasted on our backs, like, in the beginning? I know a lot of my Miami boys, too, you know? like. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking so about. So it's like that. It's we had that experience, but we learned in a time when, yeah. So now these guys are learning it, and they're learning. Like, look, Craig Jones. Now, if you hear his mentality on grappling, dog, mm. it's kind of wild, dog. He has like a, he'll say some wild shit. Like when I was just with him recently, and he was like, "Yo, he's like, ah, oh, the side mount's a fucking fake position. Fuck the side mount." And he's buggy choking everybody from there. And he's all <laughs> about, he's all about great binding the legs, like and doing like the traps and shit. So. Mm. Yeah, 100%. Yo, hey. when you come in for the next scrap, we'll have you come in and prepare and, and hype up the fight and shit. Yeah, you know for sure, saying, bro. I'm always, bro. Damn, yeah, dear dog, you old school, bro. You were hey, a fucking veteran in the game. I wanted to have you on because I know you've been seeing the evolution of Miami MMA, MFA, yeah. Naga tournaments, Grappler's <laughs> Quest, bro. Boy, Fuck, about. My G, man. Hey, Yo, it's good G. having you, dog. It's good hey, to see bro. you in the game. I'm a big fan hey. of your social media, dog. Uh, plug it up right yeah, now. Tell the people what you got going on. Oh, yeah, on. guys. If you guys want to know more about me, you can look at me on Instagram, Bellico MMA. Uh, also, you can look me up on my website, which is www.edierterry.com. And I have my own period for those of you that wants to help me out, support my career, you know. You could take a, one of my brands, you know, one of my t-shirts, you know. You can see a lot of things there, as accessory, apparel, even my gear, you know. Awesome. Hell yeah. And yo, if anybody wants to treat your training people too, dog. Yeah, you, I do train people. If anybody want to train me, how long you been in the, dog, you been a martial artist your whole uh, life? Yeah, more or less. Life. Two, about to be two decades. And MMA? Uh, almost, MMA, almost, I want to be. Uh, two decades? No, more, MMA, more and years. MMA, uh, I want to say about, MMA, just pure MMA, about 12, 13, no, 14, 15 years. Uh, yeah. I'm for sure 15, because I think yeah, I, got well, four, I got 15, 15 in, yeah, so you 15, might have yeah, like 17, probably a little uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, 2009. I, well, that's why, I mean, 2009, I, <laughs> 2009 to 2019. Uh, I like to call it more martial arts. Uh, instead uh, yeah. of saying MMA, I like martial arts. How long you been in martial arts this long? Bam. Martial yeah. art, I like that one too. Yeah. Martial artists. Martial artists, bro. That's it. We are martial, yeah, martial artists. artists. <laughs> Fucking Bushido Gold. I love it, dog. <laughs> yo, dear Terry. Yeah, yo. That was the big one. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Honey Badger Hour. I don't even know what episode we're at. We're so, out. Yo.